Pitchwood Sailors in a Patriot League matchup. My name is Jonathan Clary. Thanks for tuning in to this edition of QATV Sports. Being joined up here in the booth by Martin Dunham. And Martin, last week North Quincy had a huge victory down at Pembroke, 43-32 to to even their record at 3-3. Three and three. Uh, But they come up now against a tough Situate Sailors team here at the stadium. Yeah, fantastic game last week for the Raiders. Uh, fell behind early, 13-0 down at Pembroke. Uh, it was 19-7 at the end of the first quarter, but they battled back and a strong second half where they outscored Pembroke 22-6. Uh, really big uh, key down there uh, was their ability to be balanced Kicking on the offensive off the side. Uh, they will run the ball well. They were very effective pass the ball, especially down the field. Uh, so hopefully we'll see some of that tonight. Uh, defense really stepped up in the second half down at Pembroke as well to hold a team like that with a lot of talent to just six in the second half. They'll be looking to do some of that tonight. All right, opening kickoff here, and it's going to be fielded by Situ at the 15-yard line. North Quincy won the toss and deferred their option to the second half. And return's going to get brought up to about the 29-yard line, and that's where the sailors will start. Situ is one of the most dangerous offensive teams in the league. Uh, Coached by Herb Devine, he's been with the Sailor program as the head coach since 2008, I believe. And they've run the syst- their offensive system for a, a number of years now. So there's a lot of consistency within that program. Uh, they execute at a high level. They do a lot of RPO type actions where they're gonna have run blocking up front, but they're gonna throw uh, quick to a single receiver or to a receiver over the middle. So uh, the Raiders will have their hands full tonight. All right, first and 10 again for the Sailors. Ball at the 29-yard line. Quarterback for sales looking downfield down to the right sideline, and it is complete. Nice catch down there. Pass was complete to Joseph Burke, the junior for the Sailors, uh, down at the 44-yard line, as we'll see here on the replay. Burke listed at six feet. It might be a little bit longer situate coming out firing right away. Uh, quarterback Jackson Belson, to senior, looked downfield right away. Ben Hudak was right there to make the play, but... Uh, Burke was able to high point it over him. Got a motion the back out of the backfield, quick swing. All right, over to the left side goes the ball carry. That's number 21, William Robinson. And they're going to mark him down at about the 40, let's see if they back, make it that the 41 yard line. Take a look at their uh, replay real quick. They just use a quick motion, they swing him out in the back. Ben Wallen jump. Had his hands, just missed him there. Uh, Nate Sands does a good job coming up, trying to force it back in. So you see Sitchwick going tempo here. They're going to do some signaling. And enough again to Robinson. Cuts over to the left side. Gets tackled after a couple of yards gain there. Look like in there for North Quincy was Ben Hudak, number 21, on the tackle. And they're going to spot Robinson down at the 37-yard line. Ben Hudak, great two-way game last week. Running back, had over 120 yards rushing on the ground. Couple touchdowns, and on defense, he had, I believe, he had a couple tackles, pass deflection as well. All right, third down and about three now. Situate looking to the sidelines for the play. Change running backs. We got Alex Burrill in the backfield now. He had over 200 yards last week against Plymouth South. All right, Burrell gets the carry, and he goes right up into the middle, and North Quincy maybe gives him a yard, but it will be short of the first down. They're going to mark him down at the 35-yard uh, line, as we'll see here in the replay, and just shy of the first down. Great job up front, number 50, Noah Baker, D-tackle, shed his block pretty quickly. Uh, Michael Nissen, number 34, also in there for the Raiders D-tackle. Creates fourth and one. Quarterback Jack and Jackson Belson in the shotgun, number seven, senior for the Sailors. All right, so fourth and about one now. Burrell's in the backfield. They give it to him, and he has the first down anymore. Over to the left side, breaks free, and still on his feet, and will get brought down at the North Quincy 20 yard line. He had some space over to the left side. He exploded through that hole, and again, big first down for the Sailors. Tough break there, and good run by Burrell. They're going to switch him out for William Robinson. Citro does a good job. They mix up formations using a couple tight ends, a couple running backs, a couple wide receivers. Good balance. Ariel White for North Quincy was in the backfield, but could not bring down Robinson. Robinson snuck away from him and is going to get a gain of maybe one on the play, as we'll see in the replay. No gain. Great job. Wall and John chasing down from the backside. Paul Glynn came from the front side. Raiders, in order to be successful tonight, are going to have to make first up tackles tonight. Uh, They've had a tendency to be inconsistent at times. 
Uh, second half last week, you said down in Pembroke, they were outstanding. Uh, so this week, they're going to need a little bit more consistency uh, in order to take down the best team that they've played so far this year in the Sailors. All right, they're going to say no gain on that last run there by Situate. So second down in 10. Pass over to the left side, screen to the left. And it's complete, and ball carrier is going to get up to, let's see where they mark him down. Charlie Hartwell was the receiver, and they're going to get him down to about the five-yard line. They get the four-yard line. Oh, excuse me, to the nine-yard line. We'll see it real quick on the replay. Yeah, they're actually going to mark that at the eight, so great misdirection there by Situ. As you see, fake the swing to the right, and they're going to come back with a wide receiver screen to the boundary. And they're going to go quick run up the middle for Burrell from the eight. Gains only a couple. Nice job there by Ariel White, Paul Glenn. Brody Baker to come in on the tackle. Looks like that was Robinson that they gave it to up the middle there. And they're going to say, let's see, gets up to, mark him down at the seven yard line there. You're going to check, they're going to look, now that Citra has a look at the uh, north alignment on defense, they are going to call what they believe to be the optimal play. They're a heavy trap team, heavy power, so expect to see pulling guard coming up the middle with Burrell coming right up the middle. See Burrell there on the right of the sideline looking to pass into the end zone, and it is incomplete. Nice job there by number three for North Quincy, Marquez Rodriguez-Smith, to break up that play. Nice job by Rodriguez-Smith. They motion across, put him one-on-one, -on -one, as we'll see on the replay. Just a quick out from the wide receiver split. I couldn't see who that was. I think that was Charlie Hartwell, number 26. Yep. So Hartwell... Rodriguez Smith comes up. It was a high throw from Belson. Rodriguez Smith was there to meet him. All right, so third and goal now from the seven yard line for a situate. Send a man in motion. Belson over to the left side, and it's incomplete. He was looking for Burrow. And you can see there, Burrow upset with himself that he let that ball go through his hands, as you see in the replay. He had a wide open for the end zone if he was able to get through that, but he couldn't hold on to it. Fortunate break there from him, as you said. Situa does as good of a job as anybody in the area with their offense in terms of using misdirection, using different concepts to get your eyes looking one way and they're going to come back the other. Um, that's the second time they've kind of faked something to the right, come back with the screen to the left. All right, man in motion, Belson looking to the corner of the end zone, and it is touchdown situate. Holding on to it was Lawson Foley. Went up there and got that ball, a 50-50 ball there, and Foley comes down for the touchdown. 50-50, that might be a little bit more than 50-50. Uh, Lawson Foley, 6'3", 195, junior. Uh, has a little height advantage, Rodriguez Smith, but uh, Belson does a good job. He dropped that in there really nicely in the back pylon. All right, so Foley gets a seven-yard touchdown pass. All right, Sam Allard will come out for the extra point attempt for the Sailors. Good snap, good hole, kick is up, and it is good. So with 7.25 left to go here in the first quarter, Citra comes down in the opening drive, and they put seven points on the board to take the lead. Well, they had some good plays in that series. They were able to stop no gain, a minimal gain. Uh, unfortunately, they just weren't able to get off the field third and fourth down to get that last key stop. Uh, that's something that the coach staff will adjust, and that's something that they'll be emphasizing, I'm sure, uh, down the sideline and throughout the defensive huddles uh, throughout the game. When they get situated in those third mediums or fourth downs, they got to be able to stop and get off the field. North has got a pretty good offense. So the past couple weeks, they've been starting to put it together a little bit. So the more that those guys can get out in the field, the more plays they get, the better the, the whole operation is going to be. All right, we're going to get our first chance when the North gets the ball here to see Mikey Galligan. He had a great game down at uh, Pembroke last week, 9 of 15 passing for 287 yards, three touchdown passes, and ran the ball in for a score as well. So four touchdowns for Galligan last week. Uh, so hopefully North Quincy can come out and get that offense rolling again. Again, 43 points scored last week down at Pembroke. Yeah, it's as, it's as many points as we've seen in a couple of years. It was just the balance of the offense was, was so great last week. You said uh, Ben Hudak had 120 yards on the ground, a couple touchdowns. And then on the receiving end, for Mikey Gallagher's pass, they had four different guys catch passes last week. Uh, three of them got touchdowns. 
Rodrigo Smith takes it from the 10 yard line, runs down the near sideline, and finally we get forced out of bounds at the 40. Great job by Rodrigo Smith. He's fast killing the team. Dangerous as we see here on the replay. Uh, North Queens does a good job. They get the return unit all on the same side here. It looked like they were trying to set up the wall down the sideline. And Rodriguez Smith does a great job uh, to tap the sideline and get as many yards as he can. Great job by Will Conley leading the way out in front too, number 33. All right, as you can see there on the center of your screen, number 17, Mikey Galligan, junior quarterback for the Raiders. Hand off right up the middle for uh, Ben Hudak, and nice job there by Hudak. Splits the middle there and gets into situate territory, crosses the 50 up to the situate 47-yard line. Ben's a good hard runner. He's not the fastest. He's not the strongest, but he's got good feet in the hole. He refuses to go down as we see a great block come across. I think that might have been Taylor Marquez coming in to kick out the end. Hudak does a good job right up the middle. Uh, patient but quick through the hole. Good first down. He's going to put him in the 48, so good size to drive here for the Raiders. Conley goes in motion. He gets the ball, looking for something there. And give credit there for Situa to contain him, but Conley does a nice job to cut back up a little bit, and they're going to mark him down at the 45-yard line. Yeah, good job there by Will. Slowed his feet down, as we'll see here on the replay. Does a good job. As you see, they stretch it out. A lot of players will tend to try and outrun the defense outside and then lose a couple yards. All right, and trying to go with some fakery there. North Quincy Conley looked like he was trying to run off the sideline, and he got a cue from the sideline <laughs> from the coach to turn up field, and they get it to him, and a big first down all the way up to the 30-yard line. Good little trick play there. Will, Will's a fast kid, as we can see, coming out, and uh, he sold that really well. Take a look uh, at the replay. Great throw there by Galligan. Look at this. As you can see him on the bottom Huda, of your screen, yeah, running off the screen. Oh, wow, great catch, too, there <laughs> by Will. Nice right on the sideline. Impressive. Raiders keep driving. This is what they need. Galligan looking to pass, being pressured, and he's going to get a sack for a loss there. Coming up with the tackle is number 70, Charlie Murphy, for the Sailors. And they're going to say a loss of one, maybe two in the play. We'll see if they spot the ball, and they're going to give him forward progress. So only a loss of one on the play. I don't know if we can get another look at that. Looked like a little quick game opportunity there for Mike, and whatever he was looking, he didn't like it right away. The situation defense was right on the mark. They were right on him. Take a look at the replay here. Yeah, he had a couple slants come across the middle. Uh, didn't like it. Uh, Citroen does a good job containing him, keeping him in. Uh, I'd expect Citroen to use a lot of pressure this week. Uh, Pembroke didn't send many blitzes at all last week. Sometimes they're only rushing three. Uh, Mikey's very dangerous if you give him time back in the pocket. Hudak up the middle, and he's going to get tackled by his ankles, but he's going to get a gain of a couple on the play. They'll mark him down at the 28, it looks like. A little counteraction. It's going to be third and long for the Raiders. I imagine this will be four down territory for them at the 29. So they don't need all nine yards on this shot. They can make it fourth and short, fourth and manageable. That'll be a win for the offense here. We had ben, uh, ben Wallenjom split out down to the bottom here last week. Three receptions, 133 yards, and a touchdown, uh, including a highlight reel, high point catch in traffic over. Uh, Pembroke corner and then took it in for a touchdown. Starting to emerge as a receiving threat. All right, third along, Galligan looking down the middle of the field, throws it and it is incomplete. Was looking down yes, there for incomplete. number seven, you see on your screen, Nate Sampson. But Galligan actually threw it out of the end zone and might have been a good thing there because back there, Max Carr for Situate was playing deep safety and if it had been just a little bit short, he might have picked it off. We'll see in the replay. Yeah, so they lined up three receivers in a bunch, hopefully trying to get some clean releases, which they do. Um, trying to hit Samson over the middle, but post safety there. Max Carr does a good job uh, capping that middle, making it a tough throw for Mikey. Oh, it serves almost like a throwaway. Too well, it's going to create, as you said, fourth and nine. All right, so as you said, Martin, four down territory now for the Raiders, trailing 7 0 with 4 10 left to go here in the first, and fourth and nine from the Sailors' 29 yard line. 
Galligan trying to set up his screen, has Hudak down the left sideline, crosses the 20, going all the way to the sideline at the five yard line, breaks a tackle, goes in for the wow. touchdown. Ben Hudak, a great job there. Goes all the way down for the touchdown, as we'll see here on the replay. What a great catch there by Hudak. It's tough to see on the camera, but the rain has picked up over the past hour. Not the easiest to throw and catch. Hudak does a great job. He's got an escort out in front. Michael Finney, uh, captain. Brody Baker, tackle, leading the way. Noah Baker, number 51 of the guards. Uh, North Queens does a great job executing on that screen pass there. Hits for a touchdown. Great to see North Answer right back. 27, Alvin Nicola, All right, Alvin Nicola will, will come up for the extra point attempt. Kick, kick is up, up, and it is good. It is good. So good. North Quincy comes right down and answers North the call, the and they the tie first. the game at seven with exactly seven. four minutes to go in the first. The extra point's going to be all important tonight. Nicola's been steady all season for the Raiders. I, that's his 15th extra point. He's only missed one, and the one he missed was here, and that was the one the two of us were kind of looking at, trying to figure out which way oh, he, he missed yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was right over the post, so he's... Uh, only a sophomore, but another in the long line of uh, steady rate of kickers. Uh, I was going to say, over the last 10 North years, North Quincy's had a lot of good good kickers that have come through the program. Yeah, the, the previous one, uh, Thomas Murray, he's up at uh, kicking in college right now as well. So, um, very talented. Kieran O'Driscoll before that. I know he was looking at, I think he was looking at possibly trying to walk on at UMass before. But, um, as you said, yeah, definitely a talented line of kickers coming yeah. through which at the high school level is huge. It's just an added bonus, uh, punting, extra points, field goals, all that, especially where two-point conversions aren't, aren't a given. All right, kickoff by Nicole. Going to be fielded at the 13-yard line by Situate. Coming up there, it's William Robinson on the return. Robinson got held up on the sideline at the 30 and fights his way forward for an extra yard maybe. And they're going to mark him down at the 31, and that's where the sailors will start. We'll take a look at the replay here of the return. Yeah, William Robinson's a pretty shifty kid. I know he's a lacrosse star uh, situated as well, so he's got that ability to kind of dodge and kind of evade people in close space. So he's coming up the sideline. Rodriguez Smith is trying to force him back in. But Robinson kicks it outside. Rodriguez Smith does a good job getting off the block and uh, making that initial contact. Situ is going to have three receivers towards the left side of the field up top, and he got a tight end uh, towards the bottom. Now looking downfield and wide open receiver, a bit incomplete. He dropped it. Sam Allard, number four, was down the middle of the field. He broke free, but North Quincy catches another break, as we'll see here in the replay, as uh, Belson threw a strike to him, but Allard couldn't hold on. Well, Belson just holds and holds. He saw it developing. Uh, a little miscommunication, a little breakdown on the back end there for the Raiders. Uh, Situate motion into a four receiver set, which is something that will probably require a special check or a special adjustment for the Raiders. Now they only have two receivers each side. Belson again looking to pass, pump fakes. Nice coverage there by North Quincy. Belson's gonna run and he's gonna get tackled by one, two, three, four North Quincy defenders. As you see here in the replay, getting up off the bottom of the pile was Noah Baker for the Raiders. Raiders played man, did a good job. You can't see it off the screen, but they ran a, a dig route, a 10 yard in uh, behind the linebackers. Number seven, as you see in the screen, Nate says he did a great job covering that stay right on top for us, and Belson to have to take off. Belson again pass over to the left side and it's complete to number eight, Lawson Foley. And he initially had the first down, then he started to run backwards, but they're gonna say they're gonna say he does have the first down with the forward progress up to the 42 yard line. So it'll be a first down for Situate. Good stick route there by Situate. Receiver just ran right to the stick, ball turned ball around, ball, ball was on right on time. Uh, we'll see it. They might run it later. The Citrus traditionally runs out with a run play paired with it, and they can have the option to throw or run the ball. Quick pass again to Foley's complete. Nice tackle there by Hudak, but Foley will get, let's see, they're going to spot it down right at the 50 yard line. Number eight, Foley again on the reception. Good job there. Another quick hitch by the Sailors. Seven yards. Trying to really put some pressure on the North safeties. North trying not to get beat over the top, but also trying to support in the run game. Belson taking his time, looking down the left sideline, and it is complete. Nice catch there by Foley again. Hudak was trying to defend him, 
but it's going to be complete all the way down to the 32-yard line. This is a good throw there by Belson. He's a thousand-yard passer so far this year. He's, I believe a two-year starter for them. Uh, great throw, and Ben Hudak was on his tail. He was trying to get there, but just couldn't quite get there in time. All right, Sitchwood on their horse. They've been running quick plays here. Robinson goes up the middle, and it's only going to get a gain of one, it looks like, to the 31. Junior D tackle, Mike Ness again in on the play, getting off, uh, getting that initial okay, contact, and then good job by Paul Glenn to squeeze that in. Ariel White uh, filling in from inside linebacker to help minimize that run. And it looks like a timeout's getting called by North Quincy. Head coach Ryan Craig wants to get his team over there and talk about a few things. 139 left to go here in the first. And Sitch will have a second down in nine when we come back to the field. I'm sure there's a formation or uh, something must have happened within the drive that they wanted to make sure that they were adjusted to and uh, all on the same page on second and nine as well. It's a big down distance in terms of if they can kind of hold the sails here for the next few plays. Uh, that'll be huge for them. Uh, so, big sequence. Hope we get, a, uh, you know, get some water, get some rest. As you said, a minute 39 left. Hopefully they can uh, get the stop here right before the end of the first quarter. Real quick, we want to give a, uh, a plug for anyone that might be interested in becoming an official. The Eastern Massachusetts Association of Interscholastic Football Officials, the EMAIFO, is looking for you to join their team. It's the easiest call you will ever make. So uh, if you're interested in being a referee for the South Shore, Cape and Islands, or South Coast of Eastern Massachusetts, uh, we encourage you to go on to their website, emaifo.net. Again, that's emaifo.net, Eastern Massachusetts Association of Interscholastic Football Officials. I know a couple of officials. That's a pretty tight-knit group, and, you know, a bunch of good guys as well. They love the game, and it's their way to give back. Uh, but definitely a tight group. Uh, if you're looking to get involved, I know some guys look to get into officiating because they don't have the time for coaching necessarily to be there every day, but uh, officiating is their way they can get back where it's one or two days a week. Great All little right. fraternity. Yep, definitely. All right, Sister comes out second down and nine. They're going to hand it off now to Alex Burrell. And Burrell over to the left side, explodes through the hole, and finally gets pushed out of bounds at the, let's see, at the 12-yard line. Take a look at the replay and see that run here. Yeah, right up the middle, they run some counter action. They pull the guard, they pull the tackle. Right side of the Citroen line, uh, number 64, Captain Colton Downing. And it looked like it might have been number 52 or 62. I think it was 62, Chris Caparella. Uh, both big guys. Citroen's going to go quick pitch to the boundary. See Robinson over to the left side, and he's going to get right down to the goal line. They're going to mark him down at the one yard line. Nice run there by Robinson. And it'll bring now a first and goal. Carried by number 21. Citrus got as good of a 1 2 tandem uh, in the backfield as anybody in the league. As you mentioned, William Robinson's had a couple hundred yard games this year, and Alex Burrell had 200 uh, last week against Plum South. Robinson gets the carry. Oh, big hit there by North Quincy, but I think Robinson might have gotten in. And they're going to say no. Coming up with a stop there. Brody Baker, number 66, exploded through. Nah, he just checked in, too. So great play by Brody. Uh, we see on the replay, it looked like they were running a quick trap. Brody slips inside, makes initial contact, does a great job. Michael Finney right in there as well, blow it up in the backfield. It's tough to trap down on the goal line, um, especially the Raiders. They like to go with the heavier front as we see bigger bodies with uh, Baker checking in. Uh, susceptible to open gaps, and Raiders are able to shoot that. They give it to Robinson again, and he's going to be stopped again in the backfield. This time for North Quincy, who's Taylor Marquez that comes up, and we'll see on the replay. Replay, excuse me. Great job there by Taylor. Took out the legs, and uh, Cavalry came in. Number 63, Brady Craig. Number 21, Ben Hudak came in to finish it off, make sure he didn't get over the line. He's going to bring up a third and goal now for Sitch with back-to-back -back great plays by North Quincy. So Northman uh, banged up the past couple weeks and missing a lot of key guys. Some seniors due to injury, unfortunately, but a lot of the younger inexperienced guys have been stepping up. Uh, as we saw in that play, number 63, Brady Craig, he stepped right in, uh, helped making that tackle there. Brody Baker, um, they're going to need a lot of that. And they give it to Robinson again, and I think this time he gets into the end zone, and he does. Touchdown, Robinson. But it took him three tries, Martin, to get in, and he finally was able to punch it in on the third attempt. Uh, good run there by uh, Robinson. Get, got stuffed initially, as we'll see on the replay. Raiders defense was able to 
kind of get that initial push, but Robbins keeps driving his feet, driving his feet, and he gets in. Michael Finney, Taylor, Marquez are in there initially. Situate went under center with their split backs. That's like their little goal line short yardage formation deal. They haven't used it. I don't know that I've seen them use it this year. Um, but that is an old Whitney Hanson staple where Herb Devine graduated from. and I believe he coached here good. for a number of years. And I know when they need a couple of yards, that's their, one of their go-to looks. All right, the kick by Sam Allard is up and good. And that is the end of the first quarter. So Situate goes down the field and answers North Quincy's call. And now Situate takes a 14-7 lead as we'll get ready to start the second quarter. Right, this has the potential to be a, an old-school Big 12 shootout here, I think, tonight <laughs> with the way these offenses are able to get up and down the field. Um, we'll see North on their second drive here. They were able to mix it up a little bit, run and pass, um, screen game. Uh, screen game is going to be effective, I think, for them tonight if Citra chooses to pressure. Uh, North's done a good job this year being able to utilize running back screens, wide receiver screens. Um, be interesting to see in this kick return as well whether Citra will go to kick it deep for them again or whether they might change it up, maybe squib it or kick it away from Rodriguez Smith. For the past couple weeks, he's ripped off a couple big 30, 40 yard returns. Especially coming off that uh, last return, they set up a pretty nice wall down their sideline. So, see if North might try and replicate that. Usually, when you set a special return up like that, like a wall, um, I know we haven't seen it yet. Uh, Situate for years is, uh, is known around uh, South Shore. They got a pretty good punt return, but they set up a wall, and it's you know they usually you usually set it up on your sideline so that it's slower for you to recognize as a coaching staff. Where if it's set up right in front of you, you see you can kind of call it out. Whereas if you run it towards your bench, it's harder to communicate that. All right, Allen with a nice kick. It's going to be fielded at the nine-yard line by Rodriguez Smith. And Rodriguez Smith trying to get out of harm's way. There's four Sailor defenders down there, and he's going to be tackled down at the five-yard line. Ah, tough break for the Raiders. They tried to set the wall up again, and the, the, the chess match continues. They kick towards the opposite corner there, away from the wall, as we'll see in the replay. Uh, great kick here by Al. Puts it deep. As we see the Raider return team, they're all going towards that Situate sideline, and Fortunately, Rodriguez Smith has got a very long run to get to the wall yeah. um, before he's able to get any blockers in front of him. So tough break there for the Raiders. We mentioned at the top of the broadcast, Situa comes in with a record of 3-3. Three and three. Uh, Right now they are in second place in the Patriot League Fish Division behind Hanover. Hanover 3-0 and in the division and 6-0 and overall, one of the top teams in Eastern Massachusetts. Yeah, big game uh, for both teams really to stay, you know, keep any... Uh, league title chances alive. Oh, big run. Ben Hudak on the carry. Stiff on there to get an extra couple yards there and up to the 20 yard line goes ben Hudak. Hudak Great run there by Hudak. Great the job 20. by the offensive line as we'll see on the replay. Gets them out of their play. own uh, goal Raider. line there. Trap block by I think that was Noah Baker coming across. Opens it right up. Hudak does a great job just hitting the hole right now getting downhill. And we get an injury timeout. Talked about uh, keeping pace uh, in uh, the Patriot League, but also uh, for both teams in the MIA playoff picture. Uh, North Quincy's in the Division Two, and uh, right now they are number 16 in, in the uh, uh, power rankings, and the top 16 teams make the playoffs. Um, so if they were to... Uh, it's, it's, a, it's like 16 with an asterisk in a way because uh, they got a couple teams in front of them with one win, but you have to have three wins to qualify. Correct. Uh, well, that's true, too. Yeah. So there's a couple teams right now that are one and five where if they go down this week or next, um, that's going to bump north up a little bit uh, as well. So that that's another big part of the Raiders win down in Pembroke last week is it clinches playoff eligibility, so to speak. And uh, based on the way the power rankings look right now, they're in a looks like they're in a pretty good spot to – be in that top 16 then you know next weekend's time yeah you're, you're my right. i should have specified that that you do have to have three wins to qualify for the playoffs and it, it's tough to follow because they, they change in it every year every <laughs> other year and no, that's true I, I know a lot of people are frustrated because the the math formula behind it is not as simple as it was for a number of years where yep. now it's you can't just calculate it tonight like hey if we do this we're in it's because the rating takes into account all games of all teams right right 
Uh, so we'll get back to that in just one second here. Uh, that last pass was thrown away there by Galligan to save the ball, and he's going to hand it off now. Looks like it was Hudak on the carry, and he's going to get up to about the 24-yard line as we see here on the replay. Yeah, right up the middle, just trying to get something there on second down to kind of make it a little bit more manageable. Uh, another trap play up the middle. Uh, Raiders having a lot of success so far with that. Quick traps up the middle. Uh, good against aggressive defensive linemen that come up field. Uh, outside blitzes as well. Uh, man coverage where there's no safety in the middle, so you kind of bust it up like uh, he was able to a couple plays ago. All right, third down and about six now for the Raiders as they come to the line. Got the Samson brothers on the bottom towards the north side. You got Will Connolly and Ben Wall and John up top. Galligan looking, looking, telling Conley to go deep, and Galligan's going to keep it himself, and he's going to be right out at the first down marker. Flag is thrown as well. Looks like it's going to be a late hit against Situate. Uh, tough run there by Mikey. We'll take a look at the replay here as we see. Yep, he's looking, he's looking. Uh, pressure comes up the middle, so he rolls out. As we see. Uh, the hit there, I don't know what, it might have been high as well. I didn't, I didn't think that was egregiously late by any stretch. As you see. Uh, uh, yeah, I can see, I guess the official thing. It was like he was out for a couple steps. Uh, so, uh, unfortunate for Citro, but fortunate for North Quincy. I think Mikey would have had the first down anyway. So it just adds uh, 15 more, or 10 more. Whatever they marked off, I think they had 15 of that. Yeah, it was 15 yeah. to the end of the run there, yeah. Yeah, Galligan needed to get to the 30. And it looked like he got to the 30, and then they added the 15 on. So the North Quincy is now at their own 45 with 10, 12 left to go here in the second quarter. So a big pickup and a 15 yards tacked onto it. So North Quincy now at midfield. Citric D line off the close being in the neutral zone. Galligan again has some space down the far sideline. He's going to run, and he's going to step out of bounds at the 42-yard line, but another first down for the Raiders. That's the tough aspect if you're a defensive coach trying to defend Mikey Galligan. Here they only rush four. He does a good job getting outside the defensive line. Uh, Citric uh, traditionally uses heavier guys in the middle. Oh, it's going to come back with oh, the hold, unfortunately. Um, as we saw, I think that was up top on the uh, left side as he kind of rolled out since it was trying to spin out. But that's the tough part about defending Mikey is if you send guys and he's able to break free, there's a lot of green space for him. Uh, he's dangerous if you don't rush him and he's got a lot of time back there. Against North Quincy, 10-yard penalty, still first down. So hold to bring him back, but if, you, if you're... If you only rush three or four and you can't get pressure on him and you allow Mikey time to sit back there and dissect the defense, he's excellent. All right, so I'm pushing them back now to the 35-yard line, first and 20 for North Quincy. Galligan looking, looking, fires down the middle of the field, and it is, did he hold on to it? He did. Wow, great catch there by Nate Sampson. Got hit as he was getting ready to catch the ball, as we'll see here in the replay, and they're going to mark him down at the 44. Great job there by Nate Sampson on the 50-50. Mike lets it rip right over the linebackers. You see what a play there. They're able to beat Ryan Zona from Situate to the ball and able to rip it away. Samson, nice grab there. Uh, brings it back to a second and manageable here. Second and 11. It's not a an extra long situation. So hopefully the Raiders can kind of cut this chunk in half. Bunch to the bottom. All right, Conley send in motion. Gal going to be pressured out. Fires downfield, and it's complete to number 14, That's Ben Wallenjong. And it'll be a first down for North Quincy. Wallenjong did a great job coming back. Flag thrown on the play, though. You spot Wallenjong down at the 42, as we'll see here in the replay. And... So they uh, motion Conley out. Mikey flushes out to the left. Uh, Number 44, Blake Nelson. See what the call is. The official's about to come over here. Illegal receiver downfield. That's a five-yard penalty against North Quincy. Player downfield. That's against North Quincy. All right, so a tough break there with an eligible man downfield for North. The 
So instead of a first down, it's going to bring the ball back to the 39-yard line. I didn't catch it initially. I'll call it again. Not, I, I didn't see initially that front. I didn't, maybe a lineman released downfield a little early. Perhaps if Mikey's rolling out, lineman thought he was going downfield. Or if it was something with the receivers with you got to say you're on or off and whether there's eligible and eligible receivers, all that kind of technical stuff. Fortunately for the Raiders, it's still second down. <laughs> I'll say that that's been one of the things with penalties, first down to second down. So, all right, second down to 16 now. Galligan fires again. And pass is incomplete. Goes through the hands of Cam Sampson. He was right at midfield. Good play design there by the Raiders. Good look by Mike Galligan. Looked like a confident throw. He wanted to let it rip in there. Uh, Nate Sampson was the inside slot man, and he ran a post to occupy the middle of the field, to occupy the safety, and Sampson came in right behind it, uh, open look. So I'm sure the Raiders will come back to that at some point. But great throw there by Mikey. All right, so that will bring up now a third and long for the Raiders, third and 16 to go. 8.20 left to go here in the second quarter. The key thing for the Raiders here, no big mistakes, uh, no turnovers. Um, it's quite a long distance, so if they don't get it, they'll be able to flip the field. Galgan being pressured out of the pocket. He's going to run, has some space, has a nice block there by Hudak, crosses midfield, gets another block there, and... They're going to say that was going to be a blindside block against North Quincy. Galligan got up to the first down marker. Yeah, it, under the NFHS rules, unfortunately, that is not a block that you're able to do. We'll see in the replay. Uh, we, so we'll, you'll see Ben Hudak initially as uh, Galligan rolls out. He kind of puts his hands up, and then he comes out in front and see how he leads with his hands there. Yep. Um, kind of that old school block there. Uh, I say old school, but I mean... You, um, just that kind of leading with the shoulder. Uh, they're trying to get away from that due to play safety, although they are marking the ball off the other way here. I'll say, yeah, no, that's uh, yeah. the officials recognize what happened there. Uh, okay, I was just going to say. I <laughs> so uh, they're, it's gonna ha uh, they're marking it off from the 44, which is where the end of the play was. Personal foul, blindside block, 15 yard penalty, North Quincy. Still third down. So that per basically puts it back right where they were. They should <laughs> start the play right. Uh, but it's a, it's a player safety thing uh, that's been heavily emphasized by the NFHS the past couple of years. Uh, uh, so the, the intent of the rule is good. Um, trying to eliminate some of those heavier contacts. So usually if you're leading with your shoulder, you end up a little bit higher. Um, player's defenseless. He's not able to see the block. Whereas if you're fronting out with the hands, it's a a less intense or a less dynamic block, I guess. Um, so that's why you see guys like Hudak in the last play, very smart. He had his hands up initially, and then he had his hands out in front of him. I was like, he was really trying to tell the official, yes. I'm, trying to, I'm, I'm waiting, waiting, and like that. All right, so it ends up being third down again, third and 14. Galligan way downfield for looking down, and oh. incomplete was looking for Wallenjohn. That's incomplete. Yeah, looking for any flags on the field there, but there's nothing no, down I, the field. I definitely just did a couple looks around. I was like, <laughs> well, oh. <laughs> I, I heard an extra whistle than you might no, not normally hear, as we'll see in the replay here, the pass downfield. Uh, so that's why I didn't know if I, I missed a flag. Uh, but it, it goes incomplete, so it'll be fourth down. Taking a shot there for Wallenjohn. I think maybe a little misjudgment there. I think if he kept running, he might have been able to get under that a little bit. I know with the lights and the rain and everything, it's a little bit tougher to judging. Uh, you, you might normally expect or normally practice with. We're going to see Michael miss the back to punt for the Raiders. Well, bad snap there, and Situate's going to capitalize on it as they're going to get the ball back at the North Quincy 30 yard line. The snap was a little low, and it couldn't be handled by Michael Nista. Ah, tough break. Take there a look at the replay here, real quick. A tough break there for the Raiders. Yeah, the snap was a little slow and getting there. You said it hopped, anyway, and then so uh, ball was on the back end, so weren't able to get anything off. Situ recovers. 
covered by William Robinson, but it was fourth down nonetheless, so uh, just gives Citro a good field position. Defense is going to need a big stop here. All right, so Citro again takes over at the North Quincy 30-yard line. Another bad snap being fumbled. Oh. And it's almost intercepted in the end there. Almost sacked and almost intercepted. Let's see, we'll see in the replay. Jackson Belson, it was a low snap. He picks the ball up. And as you can see here, he just launches it to try to almost throw it away. but And then almost intercepted there by Rodriguez Smith. Second and ten, situate. The Raiders are going to need a couple of those. Uh, plays to, they're going to have to make a couple of those, I think, to slow down Situate to kind of turn momentum their way. Um, but good job by Belson to, as you said, just get rid of it. Although, as a coach, it's a risky 50 50 ball. I'm sure yeah. he'd rather him just, to, to just throw it out of bounds towards the area because uh, he was still in the pocket. Well, his feet were parallel to the, to the field and he had to throw it across his body, and so definitely a tough pass. All right, Burrow on the carry, and he's going to be close to the first down, and he's going to actually have the first down. He crosses the 20 up to the 18-yard line. Cross the 20. Little uh, guard tackle pull there by Situate. It's similar to an old-school counter, but the running back's just going to run downhill behind. Warback uh, hasn't pulled it yet, so that, that's something they could show. They don't uh, block the backside end. First and 10 for Situate. Burrow again on the carry, and nice job there by Baker for North Quincy to come up and tackle him from behind, and it's going to say no gain. Well, see here on the replay. The yep, nice job there by Burrow. He comes flat down the line. As you see, there's nothing really holding. There's no block, and the quarterback isn't really a threat to run it. I mean, he didn't no appear to be a threat, so Baker does a good job. Comes flat down the line and leaves his feet to make that tackle. See both him and the defensive end up top there, number 84, Paul Glenn, both unblocked, so uh, Citrup might come back with something different to hold those guys later on. Right, they're actually going to say he gained one on the play. Belson pass into the end zone and it is incomplete but a flag is thrown. Pass was intended for Lawson Foley and I think they're going to get Blake Nelson number 44 on the pass interference. Uh, another unfortunate the break play. there for the Raiders. Nelson was right there in the coverage. Uh, didn't get beat. He had... Uh, Position on that ball too. I just think he didn't know that the ball was right there on him. Pass interference against North Quincy. We'll take a look at the replay here. Pass interference against the Raiders. So they motion across a uh, fake screen wheel, and I don't think Nelson knew the ball was coming yeah. his way, and he had the the motion of throwing the guy down. Uh, Nelson a. A little pleasant surprise for the Raiders with all the injuries banged up. Uh, he's a freshman, a uh, very talented freshman. Uh, he's had some special teams duty. Um, he, and he had to step in last week uh, after guys were going down and stepped up and he made a bunch of plays, including a big fumble recovery in the second half last week uh, for the safety position. But he had seven tackles, uh, which is pretty impressive. Uh, special teams and defense as safety. All right, now the officials are over on the side of the field. Um, yeah, they, they announced it as well. They, they announced a first down over the PA, but I believe pass interference is not an automatic first down. I think that's what the officials are asking right now because you can see it says second down on the uh, the, the yard marker. There's also nobody in the sticks, so I don't know if those, if those gentlemen work in the sticks. If they're just asking for clarification or if they just because it's inside the or at the 10 they just dropped them. Well, I think people too, you know, they, they think, you know, NFL for pass interference in the end zone, it goes to the one yard line, but right. that's not the that's not the case. All right, so now they're picking the sticks back up. Second down, one yard to go. Yeah, second and one. On the snap, Larry, on the snap. Correction is second down and one yard from the nose. All right, so Citrus going to line up. They got a tight end wing here to the left. Uh, running back offset to the left. Uh, Citrus tradition likes to run inside. Let's see if they hit that. Usually a, a tight end wing is a heavy run tendency. All right, right up to middle goes Burrow, and he's going to go in for the touchdown. 
Alex Burrow. Big run there right up the middle by Burrow. And again, it is a nine-yard touchdown run, as we'll see here on the replay. Yeah, right up the middle. They uh, initially tried to hard count. The Raiders, they flinch, but they don't cross the neutral zone, uh, which is good. But uh, Situate, as you see, they walk running back over. They check into the play that they're looking for, and it's just a trap right up the middle. Uh, they had missed tackle, unfortunately, uh, right near the goal line. Burrow last week, as you mentioned, Martin, earlier on, he had 210 yards rushing and four touchdowns against Plymouth South. So he coming off a big Before week. Sam Allard, will attempt the one point. Yes, Sam Allard now for the extra point attempt. Kick is up, and it is good. Ben Hudak would thought it was no good there. So uh, nonetheless. He might, he might have been trying to convince you. <laughs> yeah, yeah maybe he too. was. So uh, Allard's <laughs> kick is good. So 6.15 left to go here in the first half. And Situate increases their lead now 21 to 7. We say so we, as we see the Situate uh, Situate's been on fire the past couple weeks. They started out the season a little bit slow. They lost to Milton pretty big to open the season. And then they come back the next week. They beat Whitney Hansen pretty good. I think they beat uh, they lost to Foxborough, I think, correct? Yeah, they lost By to like Foxborough. One score. Yeah, and then the past few weeks, uh, they've put up some pretty good point totals. Uh, beat Pembroke. 35 to 12 ish, if I remember right, John. And then uh, Hanover was a game they competed in for like three, three and a half quarters. They hung with Hanover, who's one of the top teams proven uh, right now in their division and within the state. And then last week they uh, put up a big 40 piece on Pullman South, which is also pretty impressive. Uh, not often you see Pullman South giving up 40 points in their home field. Um, we had started to talk about. Um power rankings uh we'll switch over to situate real quick we'll get back to north in one second division two situate in division four they're number seven right now in the power rankings again that's as it is stands right now i think situate should be in pretty good shape uh oh. all right ball bounces and picking up there for north quincy was rodriguez smith didn't know if he would I thought it might have gone out of bounds, but he realized it was not, so he had to pick it up there, and it was a short return. I think it was that moment of, like, uh, do I, uh, you know, trying to read that bounce. Is it going to go out? And, uh, I think he did a good job there. You just got to pick it up. You, you run it onto the ball, one bounce, uh, take what you can get, especially with the kickoff team coming down. You can't, you can't wait. You can't let it uh, wait for it to go out. Um, right, so they mark him down at the 20-yard line, and that's where North Quincy will start. The the night, yeah, they marked him back at the 19. Oh, now they marked it back. Well, the, the, the ball's at the 19, but the 6 are at the 20, John. Right, that, yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, from the 19, first and 10 for North Quincy. Hudak on the carry up the middle, and he's going to get stopped immediately there, trying to see the number getting up off the bottom of the pile for Situate. And it's number 32 coming up to make that initial hit, Ronan Manning. Nice job there by Manning. He's a 6'195 junior for Situate. Uh, also on that was number 58 for a Situate who is not on the roster. Unfortunately, I don't, I don't have him on mine. Nope. Uh, that gentleman also made a nice play in there. Two inside linebackers uh, for Situate. But the Raiders see some opportunities up the middle, and they've been trying to hit at that, and they've done a good job for the most part tonight being able to get that. Gain a one on that last play. Galgan under pressure all the way back to his five-yard line. He's going to throw it downfield. Has a man downfield. Conley can release at the 50-yard line. Now at the 40, at the 30, trying to cut back up to the side of the field. Conley with one man to beat. He's at the 10, at the 5. Get in, Touchdown, Will. North Quincy. What a play there. Galligan all the way back. Launches it downfield for a wide open Will Conley. And Conley with a hustle down. Dives at the end for the touchdown. And we got no flags. That's the best part about it, John. Like he rolls out. I think he was looking for Nate Sampson initially on the cross. He rolls out and Will Conley gets behind the defense. And what a great job to cut back and... Uh, every bit, every ounce of energy to get to the end zone there. And so uh, does a great job diving for it. Running out of steam there at the end, but he said dove into the end zone. Wow, what a play there by Conley. The 11th touchdown pass in the year for uh, Mikey Gallagher. Um, which, uh, historical fact, John, that has tied the program record, I believe. Uh, okay. So Mikey is uh, continuing strong here. Bad. Uh, high snap here. And North Quincy, oh, they, they get a two-point conversion, and they do! Wow! 
Well, all things are going right now in North yep. Quincy, and they got to get the two-point conversion. We'll take a look here on the replay, and it looked like going in. Break the need. Will Conley is the hold of two just out of his reach, and Alvin Nicole, the kicker, throws it to Ben Wallenjom, it looked like, on the conversion. What a play there by the Raiders. What alert. Wow. Play. You practice it every week, to hope, and you hope you never have to use it, but that is the situation. That is why you practice it every week you get you know sometimes it's you know 10 minutes of special teams a day or tw you know whatever it is uh, for a situation like that I don't know if Alvin Nicole has ever thrown a pass before <laughs> but he's one for one for two points so we'll take that makes it a six point game and one of the Raiders have flipped this around quick five minutes ago in the first half uh, they deferred on the opening coin toss as well, so depending on how the possession shakeout come down the half, they will receive, I assume, to start the second half. Nothing's ever guaranteed, but I assume they're going to take the ball. They do have an option. They could elect yep. to kick off if they really wanted to, but I'm going to guess. Maybe if the winds go to 60 and it starts to downpour. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but that's something that's going to be, I'm sure, in the back of everyone's mind as the uh, clock winds down here in the first half as well, trying to milk that extra possession out. All right, Nicola's kick. Going to be fielded at the 24-yard line by Burrell. Alex Burrell goes over to his sideline and will get knocked out of bounds. And we're going to have a late hit as well on North Quincy. So we're going to attack on 15, it looks like, to that as well. We'll take a look at the replays. You see the flag yeah. on the top of your screen. Well, Rodriguez Smith does a good job chasing him down. But I think the official deemed that it was a little bit extra at the end. Uh, Citra does a good job getting to the outside. Uh, ben Wallen's almost over there, but yeah, that little extra pull. Uh, the officials are all over that, uh, all over that stuff tonight on both sides. To be fair, so uh, it's stuff you like to see. It's player safety. You don't want to see somebody getting late hit. Um, as much as it was just maybe a little pull down, uh, but those are the little things the Raiders will clean up. I know uh, Coach Ryan Craig uh, talking, co coaching up some of these guys, and I'm sure there'll be a point of emphasis at the half in terms of cutting down. Dead ball, late hit. 15-yard penalty, first down. It's always tough as a player, too, because you know, you're you making that play, and you, you maybe you got them wrapped up, you're going out of bounds, and you don't necessarily know exactly when you're out of bounds. First and 10 Salem's. That's going to give Citra a prime uh, field position to start here. So big return, and then they uh, get the ball now with the extra 15 up to the 44. 43. Yeah, they back at the North Quincy 43, so... A big return and then an extra 15 yards there as well. Low snap, Belson holds on to it. Pass looking downfield and it is incomplete. Looked like he was looking at number 15, Joseph Burke. Take a look at the re replay here, excuse me. It was a good adjustment there by Burke initially. It looked like he was running towards the middle post and Belson looked like he kind of threw it over his back shoulder so you see him trying to adjust there. Uh, good job on the coverage by Ben Hudak. Well, this will be advantageous if North can get a quick stop here. They'll give them plenty of time to operate. They got two timeouts as well. They, they and they, they kind of use one as you say. They have two hey. timeouts. They'll well, you don't carry them over, so um, better to use it now and be on the same page defensively to try and not let up the big play. Uh, try and uh, maybe there's a call or a tendency that the coaches are looking at that they might want to discuss on the sideline. Um, the three receiver sets have been giving North a little bit of a problem tonight, and Citra does a good job of they've hit that hitch a couple times in the slot. Now they went deep with it over the top. Uh, North playing some man tonight, so Citra trying to attack them over the top. Real quick, we'll uh, put a button on the power rankings and playoff picture. Uh, so, again, we said right now North Quincy is number 16 in Division Two, but with a couple teams ahead of them, they need to win out in order to qualify. Uh, with that said, Quincy High School is number 17. 
uh, with a 2-4 and four record. So uh, they would need to win one of their last two games uh, coming up here as well to see if they can sneak into the playoffs. Uh, Quincy High School, they're going to be playing here at the stadium tomorrow night, and they're going to be hosting Plymouth South. And then next week they go down to face the Situate Sailor team. So two tough, t uh, two tough games, excuse me, for Quincy High School to see if they can sneak in uh, to the playoffs or at least qualify with a, number, with a third win uh, and get in as well. Yeah, third one is the is the uh, big part of the math. Right, Belson takes his time, throws down field, and it is intercepted by North Quincy, picked off there by Nate Sampson. Sampson trying to make a little return now, and he's going to get pushed out of bounds, and a late flag as well. And now a lot of pushing and shoving there on the sideline. As some North Quincy players took offense there to the hit. And the situation trying to... Citrus coach is trying to get everything out of there. Yeah, the North Coast are trying to keep everyone on the sideline uh, while trying to get over there. Yeah, uh, as we see, good job there. That's that's Ronan Brown, uh, the Raiders sophomore. He does a good job uh, trying to help pull some guys. Although those guys should be on the sideline. Uh, there's going to be a lot of discussion from the officials now on how to discuss and deal with this. Uh, right, we'll, we'll take, take a look, look at the replay yeah. here. Uh, it was a great play. Pressure by Paul Glenn from the backside. Hit Belson right as he threw it. Samson does a great job on the return. Coming off the sideline. Crossing the 40, 45. Uh, it was a high hit. Uh, helmet to helmet. And then, uh, uh, unfortunately, a little bit of extra unnecessary stuff on the sideline. And uh, as you see, uh, the situate coaches... A couple of them are trying to be proactive and get it broken up, but it's a tough situation uh, when you get so many people involved in a short space there. Um, so you see the officials are going to gather now. There's going to be, like I said, a lot of talk. The coaches are probably going to be having a big discussion with their teams here. Coach Ryan Craig's going to get everybody in. Uh, going to have to refocus here. Quick talk. Um, unfortunate end to what was a big play for North. Um, and this could shake out any number of ways, unfortunately, after seeing that replay. All right, so Sampson caught the ball and, and ran and got pushed out of bounds at the 43-yard line. So as of right now, that's where... It stands, and as you can, you can see, the official is trying to then figure out everything from there. Officials telling Situate to go back to the sideline while they can figure everything out. So, that official there, Mr. Angelo. Daja, maybe, John. I know you know Sounds his name. right, yep. Yeah, he's been around for years. He's talking to the official work on that sideline over there to uh, get his take on what happened. Um, unfortunately, um, yeah, a lot of discussion here. And here comes the referee and I have two dead ball fouls one dead ball against Situate the second dead ball against North Quincy they cancel out alright so two personal fouls or two dead ball personal fouls and as you just heard there they're going to cancel out so it looks like it's going to be North Quincy ball at their own 43. Uh, so the, the benefit, or not, I don't want to say Direction benefit, wrong word there. Uh, probably the good thing is that they didn't identify anybody in either team necessarily for something outstanding to where they would be taken out uh, on either side. So I guess that's a positive in all of that. There wasn't somebody that did something completely outrageous that the officials deemed right. that needed an, an ejection. Uh, sometimes it's the offsetting personal fouls are a good way to kind of calm both teams down. I'm sure the officials are going to talk to both coaches and try and settle it down. Uh, but that's an unfortunate situation there, you mentioned. Uh, but the Raiders did 
make a great play, a great interception by Nate Sampson uh, to get the Red Raider offense back into the field. We're at the 43-yard line driving with just under five minutes left. So, yeah, it was a big stop there by North Quincy because uh, uh, Situan had some good field position. They had a penalty to get a little bit further down into North Quincy territory. Uh, and then with the, the nice play there by Sampson to pick the ball off uh, and a nice run there as well. So North Quincy has an opportunity here. All right, Will Conley gets the pitch, started to the right, cuts back to the left now, over to the Situan sideline, and he's going to get pushed out of bounds, and we're going to see him out of bounds at the 40, 43 yard line. Nice run there by Conley. He got the pitch, as you see, coming across. It shows a good job boxing it out, and he's going to cut back. And look at that quarterback number uh, 17, Mikey Galligan, with a nice block coming back. Uh, did a great job. He got in the way, and he didn't get knocked over. Uh, so. Good job there to <laughs> open up that lane. Well, you, you get nervous sometimes. You see the quarterback well, yeah, trying no, to lead the way. You don't want to. Yep. You want to see him get hurt. You don't want to see him do something crazy. He's trying to throw a huge block and he gets himself hurt. But he does a good job. He got in the way. I uh, didn't leave with the shoulder. No penalty. Nothing like that. All right, first and ten for North. Trap. Nice run. Oh, he's right oh. there too. Say so Hudak was trying to get away from one tackle, but give credit there to number 32 on the tackle, Ronan Manning, to bring him down. Otherwise, Hudak had a lot more space here to run, as you'll see here on the replay. Hudak on the carry. They're gonna spot Hudak down at the 40-yard line. Yeah, Noel Baker, good job on the trap, as we see uh, from situate number 64, the Colton Downing, one of the captains. Big physical lineman, but he's pretty aggressive getting upfield, and North taking advantage of it. Galligan looking, looking. Looking oh, way downfield, has Conley downfield, and oh. is incomplete there. At the last yeah, second coming up to make a play was A.J. Remels. Uh, it was just like if you're going to get in there like half a second quicker, uh, Will was like, you know, praying for that thing to come. He got behind the defense again, though. Mikey saw it and identified it, and it just died right when it got there. It looked good coming out of his hands. Uh, North's doing a good job. They're getting deep shot opportunities. And uh, kind of similar to last week. They've cashed it in. They're getting uh, good looks, as we saw earlier. They got Conley for the touchdown. We have about third and seven here. Could be possible four down territory for North. Well, they, depending on how this play ends, they might try and pin him deep if they don't get anything. All right, Galligan rolling, fires, and is incomplete. Was looking for Cam Sampson, number 13. And it will be now fourth down. Uh, so we'll take a look here on the replay. To bring up fourth down. Uh, Galligan yep. had a lot of space here. He might have been able to run there as well. But he rolls out. He, he saw it. It, it, it. There was a good luck on the comeback too. Um, fortunately, just wasn't there. So, yep. So the Raiders didn't get anything. I think they're going to go with the wise option here. They're going to play the field position game. They're going to do their best to pin situate deep in their own end, as we see in their offense. His ability to light it up pretty quickly as well, so try and make him drive it down the field. Uh, we'll see if the Raider uh, punt snap operation can be a little bit cleaner this time around. Last time, uh, they had a low snap and then uh, bobbled the ball. And they're going to try to fake here. There's a direct snap oh. to number four, Ariel White, and he's going to be a yard or two shy of the first down. Great attempt there by yeah, North. Yeah, good shot there by North. It's a, that a little in between area, and after the uh, after the miss snap before, uh, looks like it might have been a good opportunity to try a little trick play in the bag. Now uh, White was just a couple yards short, though. He did a great job to snag that. I'll tell you that that snap was coming in hot and heavy out the back there, and he had to reach up to grab it. So a great job there by White to be able to snag that. That would have been high coming back. Uh, Citroen's now going to start their drive on the 36-yard line. All right, 3.46 left to go here in the half. There's and the man in motion, and they're going to give it now. Number 21, Robinson. Robinson up the middle. Big spin move there to pick up a few more yards. Cuts over to the right side. Flag thrown on the play. We'll see if this comes back. Robinson at the five and goes into the end zone. But I think this might be coming back on a on a block by Situate. Situate is not celebrating, so we'll take a look here at the replay. Yeah, they run that counter action again. And they find a seam right up the middle. Taylor Marquez goes for the big hit there, but uh, doesn't connect. Robinson does a good job evading it. 
Um, not quite sure what the referee saw there. It's kind of hard to see in that situation celebrating. Personal so. foul face mask here. Personal Touchdown. Foul, That'll be enforced. The Raiders. So, yeah, there were no blockers in the area, unfortunately. Enforced on the try. Coach! All right, so touchdown for Situate. And a big run there. Enforced on the try, though. Uh, anyway, uh, so Situate answers right back with a big run. Uh, they've had a lot of success with that action, pulling the guard and tackle with the running back coming downhill up the middle. Uh, Robinson proven he is just as dangerous as well as Burrill is. Kick is up and it is good, good by Sam Allard. So Situate comes downfield on the big run there by William Robinson, a 64-yard run, and they now take a 28 to 15 lead. Positive side for North here as they get three and a half minutes to operate an offense, so they don't they're not necessarily two-minute mode yet, but uh, they will be able to push the ball down the field a little bit as well. They have one timeout left, and that'll give them a chance to stop the clock as well. So Now the uh, the official said it would be enforced. Yeah, he said enforced on the try, so I was kind of curious. I was confused by that. I was yeah. if they were going to enforce it here. Usually it's on the... Uh, but now the official walking back to the 40, so... Uh, I think her and Devine might be looking for some clarification. No? Here we go. All right. So that 15 was going to be marked off here for the kickoff, not the try, as the official said. So Citra was going to kick off from the 45. Uh, based on the way the kicker is, I wouldn't be surprised if he just moved it right through the end zone. As you said, North's got plenty of time to operate. They're in no immediate hurry to get down the field. they got a timeout. Uh, they, and then they have a two-minute offense, I'm sure, available at the ready tempo if they need it. They also get the second half kickoff as well, so if they can get a score here to end the half and hopefully hold situate, that'll be really big for them to get back into this. All right, and through the end zone it goes, and it'll be a touchback for North Quincy. Dead once it hits the end zone, so I'll bring the ball up to the 20 for North. Offense coming back. They've shown some flashes tonight to be able to Get some yards and big chunks. They've run the ball pretty effectively as well. They might be able to rip off a couple runs here still, uh, even with three and a half minutes left. Uh, try and move the ball down the field. Get a good look at that offensive line that's done a good job all night. Led by uh, senior center captain Michael Finney. Guards Ray Marcel and Noah Baker. We'll go through the rest on the next play. Galgan fires a bullet intended for Will Conley, but he overthrew him, so it goes incomplete. And then the other uh, piece of the off piece of the offensive line. You look at the tackles. You got number 66 Brody Baker and number 77 Mike Ekpobi. Uh, Senior heavy offensive line for North, all seniors. I'm pretty sure. So, um, some of these guys got some time last year. Some of them have some experience uh, at the varsity level, but uh, they've grown throughout the season. They've matured uh, and they've started to find their footing, especially in the run game. That's been a big part of the Raider offense the past few weeks. They've been able to find some consistency there to create some balance. Take the handoff one way, and they give it to Hudak going the other way. Hudak explodes through the middle there, over to the left side, and we'll get across the 30 and enough for the first down. And they're going to mark him down at the 35. We'll see here in the replay. I think it was number eight, Lawson Foley, maybe. I couldn't tell who the corner was over there. Situate did a good job. He got, he got off the block. Uh, Hudak probably had another five, ten yards in him there. Great misdirection by the Rays. Used a fake jet motion to Conley. Come back counter the other way with Hudak. Bring across Taylor Marquez, help lead the way as well. We're at three minutes, clock's moving, but Raiders like said, still got plenty of time. Three receivers to the bottom of your screen. Flag thrown to the play. Galligan rolling, rolling. Fires downfield, and it's intercepted by Situate. 
Coming up with the pick there, it was number 15 for the sale, is Joseph Burke. And they mark him down at the situate 46 yard line, but we'll see what the flag is. Yeah, I was looking towards the bottom. I wasn't looking up at the top where the side judges threw it. And they're going to say it's an That's illegal. That's a five-yard penalty. That will be declined. The Interception. Right. First down this way. The so an illegal foul. shift, I believe it, it was be called there. Football. And we'll take a look at the replay here. Or an illegal formation. Yeah, I think Wall and John was off there. Um, so he needed to step a yard up. Usually, those guys are usually pretty good, too, about checking in with the official. Uh, so that's something that they'll have to look at. Usually you check the official, give them a thumbs up if you're on or off. You signal one way or the other, and the official will tell you you're good, not good. Uh, well, the, the officials are all over that tonight. It's, some weeks it's hit or miss. There are some teams, you, you see in the NFL too now, where it's, you don't know who's on or who's off. And the uh, official is calling for the trainer to come out, and he's... You can hear him say number 21, 21, that's Ben Hudak. So, free timeout for everyone involved here while uh, Hudak gets attended to by flag trainer Brennan Gano. So, fortunate turnover there by the Raiders. Like, Mike, I couldn't tell whether he was trying to maybe throw that away or fit that in a tight window, but I know that's something that Coach staff has been working on him on. He had somebody deep, I know. Um, I think somebody from Citrus was kind of spying on him, reading him, kind of cut that off. Those are always tough plays you're working the sidelines, uh, especially in scramble drill, you're bringing everybody towards you. Uh, it's a big series here for the North Quincy defense. It's really important that they can get a stop here before the half. Play action pass. Belson looking way downfield, and it is incomplete. It was a little short there. Was That's looking for number 15, Joseph Burke, who just had the interception. Taylor Marquez in coverage there. So it looked like they might have been trying to attack an area that Ben Hudak was covered. Ben Hudak's one of the safeties for North, so they were trying to go after him. Um, but Taylor Marquez is an outside linebacker. So you might have felt they had that matchup. But the ball is just underthrown by Belson. Uh, Marquez does a good job. He showed his hands uh, pretty early to the official, trying to say, hey, I'm, you know, not grabbing, not pulling, not doing anything there, so no flag. All right, trips receivers to the right for Belson. He quickly throws it over to that side, and it is caught by Burke. He got hit right away by Blake Nelson, but Burke holds on to it. And it's going to be right at the first down marker, as we'll see here on the replay. It's a good design there by Situate. The safety deep and Nelson. outside linebacker pressed on that receiver on For Burke. He just comes right underneath and forces Blake Nelson down. to have to come up in space, and he made a huge spot. I'll tell you, if Blake Nelson hits as hard as anyway. He might only be a freshman, John, but uh, he, when he puts the shoulder pads down and hits somebody, it's a, you wouldn't know he's a freshman. Burke in motion, but they're going to give it to number 21, William Robinson. Robinson 21, fighting his Robinson way forward, the and they're going to mark him down at the 40. I think Bertie Baker for the Raiders seeing a tackle get on that initial trip up there. Second and seven here for Situate. Coming up on 130 now to go in the quarter. Gonna use that tight end wing as a wing rather. Flag thrown on the play. Belson looking, looking, gets pressured, and he's going to throw it away. And we do have a flag thrown by the near side side judge. So, bring up third and seven for the Sailors. We are going to get the call, Mr. Angelo. Five men in the backfield, five-yard penalty. I'll tell you, these you guys are all coach? over illegal formations tonight. Yeah. I have, I know there have been weeks uh, where. Coaches have been dying and been asking the officials and pleading for them to call legal formation, and they have not missed one tonight, I'll tell you. This is like a year's worth of illegal formations, John. I'm telling you, I swear. All right, so five-yard penalty. We'll mark it back now to the 45. Brings up a second down in 12 for a situation. 
So just kind of, you can kind of see a glimpse of the Citrus offense here. So the skill guys are coming off together. Well, the linemen stayed out together. So uh, sometimes teams that have that, they have either a separate way to signal or maybe the quarterback will communicate with the linemen uh, so that they don't have to leave uh, the huddle necessarily. They're all lined up ready to go. Pass is oh. almost intercepted by North Quincy. Number 50 for the Raiders, Noah Baker. Had to go through his hands. You'll we'll see here in the replay. Uh, he's sitting right in the middle looking at it. Opened up, did a nice job. I don't know that Belson really saw him. They were trying to hit the deep end right behind him. Uh, great job there by Baker. They tried to run the little shallow crosser from the inside, hopefully to pull him up to open that window. Uh, Noah Baker, though, with a good job. He dropped into his pass zone. To that hook zone, it was right there to make the play. Almost had the pick. All right, so bring up third now, third and 12. Belson looking, looking, gets hit as he throws, and it goes incomplete. Nice pressure there by North Quincy. Take a look at the replay here. Number 84 for North Quincy leading the way, Paul Glenn. Yeah, Paul Glenn had a huge game last week. He had nine or 10 tackles, had a bunch of pressures, uh, forced fumble. He's been really coming to his own the past couple weeks. Ben Wallen John with the pressure backside as well. Great job by the North Quincy secondary. Situ ran three receivers to the sideline at different levels, and North was there to match it. All right, fourth down now for the Sailors, and they're going to go for it. And, no, they're going to do a little kick, and North Quincy's going to just let it bounce, and it's going to get stopped there at the 22-yard line. Picked up there by Sam Allen. So the Raiders get the ball back with 56 seconds left. They got one timeout to get down the field. Uh, the Raiders will, I'm sure, have to utilize their two-minute uh, game plan here, procedure. Um, so as you can see, I think the, these guys get wristbands. You look at Mike Galligan, his left arm, he's got one. So uh, I'm sure that they have a way to communicate their hurry-up offense. Um, they'll be trying to use the sideline as well, hopefully. Uh, save as much time as they can. But if the Raiders can hit big here um, before the break, that would be huge. They receive the second half kickoff, as we mentioned. So that'll be good, but they just gotta, they gotta avoid that turnover, gotta avoid giving the situation any chance to kind of put some points on the board before the half. Get the Samson brothers split out to the bottom of the screen here. Nate's outside, Cam's in the slot. But Will Conley, Ben Wallenjohn up top. Ball at the 22-yard line. Galligan looking downfield, and it is incomplete. Was looking for uh, number seven, Nate Sampson, but the ball got knocked down and away by Situate. Not sure if the ball maybe is a little moist. Or he didn't quite get anything under. It looked like it might have just kind of slipped and died in the air. That hung in the air for quite a while. Now he stepped into it, tried to get everything on it. But that hung in the air probably a little bit longer than he would have liked. Uh, creating a 50-50 ball, but Situate right on top. Number 21, William Robinson in on the coverage. Crazy is the same offensive look here, two receivers each side. All right, second down for the Raiders. Hand up the middle, Hudak with the carry. Well, Situate's now getting in. Situate's got three timeouts, so Moore tried to See if they could kind of run it out here, but Citrus going to utilize their timeout. So it's going to bring up about third and five, third and six for North. Yeah, see where they spot them down, and they're going to spot them out to 27. So a five yard gain there by Hudak, and as you said, it'll be a third and five now. Correction, Citrus. So we're going to we take a look at the Citrus sideline over there, their coach and staff. Uh, a couple of their assistant coaches, their head coach, Herb Devine, he just walked by in the back there. Um, so I believe Situate has got a coach somewhere in the bleachers here. Um, I believe he's one of the defensive coaches um, behind us here. So he'll be relaying some information down to those guys. Um, I believe Coach Devine for Situate, he's a big part of the offense. He runs the offense for them. So uh, that's why he probably wasn't as, as involved in the hell. And now we get a look at the great shot of the Raiders huddle. Uh, Coach Ryan Craig, offensive coordinator, Dylan Meehan, uh, giving some last words. Uh, Jeff Powers as well. Jason Spry over there. Greg Summers. Uh, Raiders got a good coaching staff on them this year. 
All right, so it's going to bring up now a third and about five. Kind of that in-between dilemma here. Are you going to run it or do you pass for the first down? And Galgan throws it downfield, and it's incomplete. Was looking for Nate Sampson. The ball was just a little too high for him to bring down. Sampson was trying to keep his feet inbounds there as well. But it goes incomplete, as we'll see here on the replay. And I'll bring up fourth down. Uh, tough break there for the Riz. Sampson did a good job. He got open. Uh, just missed by inches there. Uh, like he's trying to fit one tight on the sideline. Uh, Sooner was all over the coverage, too. Number nine, Lachlan Steinmeier, right behind. Uh, unfortunately for the Raiders, that stops the clock, and Citroën hasn't had to use a timeout for that down. So Citroën will get the ball back off of this punt with two timeouts left in probably somewhere in the vicinity of 25, 22 seconds, depending on how long this ball rolls. All right, high kick there, and the dog does roll. Takes a nice Quincy, no, excuse me, North Quincy go, roll, and they're finally going <laughs> to... Let it stop yep. down at the 36-yard line with 24 seconds left. It's a good job there by Rodriguez Smith. You, you'll see some guys go pick it up. There's a good job. You just kind of let it die and let the official blow the whistle there, wait and see how long he's going to take to blow it. So you probably got a couple extra seconds out of it. 23 seconds left. Situate will have the ball in the 36. See if maybe they take a shot or two. They get two timeouts so they can... Get down the field. Their kicker, Sam Allen, looks like he's got a pretty good boot under him. So I don't know what his range is. It's probably, I imagine it's going to be at least you know 25, 30 yards. He might be able to kick it. So we'll see if maybe they try and get in field goal range for the half. Ball at the 36-yard line. Over to the right side, Robinson. And he's going to get knocked out of bounds. Flag on the play. That's going to be coming back. I think it was a block in the back. Couldn't tell who it was on the sideline, but somebody got taken out right near the sideline. Might have been Marquez, and that was block. Uh, definitely looked like it was at the very least on his back. As we take a look at the replay, Citro run one of their safe plays, a screen to the boundary. Looking to get out of bounds, and yet you can see it right there at about the 43-yard line. Personal foul clipping. Here, 15-yard penalty. Against the Sailors. So a little marching back. The Citroën with the uh, offensive play to try a, a quick play to save time and get up the sideline. Um, we'll see if whether this changes their philosophy in terms of whether they decide to kneel it out. The huddle's all pretty close together, so... This might indicate a situation where they're just going to take the knee and go walking. And that looks like that is what's going to happen after the 15-yard penalty. All right, so that will be the end of the first half here. And it was an exciting first half with a back-and-forth action. Uh, both teams were fighting hard. Uh, both literally and figuratively on the field here uh, as we saw down after one of the interceptions by North Quincy uh, on the Situate sideline. Uh, but hard fought battle here on the field and we're going to head to the half with Situate on top by a score of 28 to 15. We will take a timeout and back with second half coverage in just one moment. Welcome back, everyone, to Veterans Memorial Stadium. We're at the half. The Situate Sailors lead the North Quincy Raiders by a score of 28 to 15. Real quick, we'll run down some stats. First for North Quincy, quarterback Mikey Galligan, 4-14 passing for 133 yards and two touchdowns. Uh, ben Hudak, eight rushes for 59 yards. Galligan has two rushes for 23. Will Conley has two rushes for 16. On the receiving side of the ball, Will Conley has two catches for 95 yards and a touchdown, that 80-yard touchdown it was. And Ben Hudak, one catch for 29 yards and a touchdown as well. Nate Sampson with a catch for nine yards. For situate quarterback Jackson Belson, 8 of 17 passing for 97 yards and one touchdown. William Robinson has 11 rushes for 88 yards and two touchdowns. Alex Burrell has six rushes, 58 yards, and a touchdown as well. Receiving side, Lawson Foley has four catches for 41 yards and a touchdown. Joseph Burke, two catches for 38 yards. William Robinson and Charlie Hartwell each have a catch as well for the Sailors. 
So, so you're looking at from the North perspective, you know, four completions only, uh, 14 attempts, so 133 yards. So, as we've seen, uh, definitely uh, hitting big plays on that end. Uh, run game, you look at the average, six and a half yards a carry, 91 yards as a team on 14 carries. Like, it's encouraging for them. Uh, unfortunately, it's it's kind of it got inconsistent in that second quarter for them. Uh, the first drive was the Raiders' best drive. It was seven plays, 60 yards. They drove the ball down. They hit the screen on fourth down to Hudak uh, to get the touchdown. Um, but that was, I think, a 24, 25-yard play. Uh, North hasn't visited the red zone yet, um, so I'm sure they'll be looking to put a drive together at some point just to kind of get down there. Uh, on six drives, they got eight first downs, uh, so I'm sure that they'll be looking to possess the ball a little bit have some consistency, be able to kind of grind it out and keep the ball away from Situate. Whereas when you look at either from the Sailor perspective, 13 first down, six drives. Um, averaging just over two first downs a drive. That's a pretty good number. Um, like if you were to average it out, usually you know, you want to average around 1.8, 1.9. Um, kind of analytically speaking, John. Um, the turnovers too are a big thing. Each team threw a pick in that first half. I know North technically had a second turn. It was a fourth down on that bobbled punt snap. Yep. Um, other than that, uh, North's just going to have to keep grinding away offensively, keep the ball, get some first downs. Uh, they haven't had much luck on third and fourth down yet. Uh, combined one for six. The Situates four for seven on those two downs. So I'm sure North will be making some adjustments offensively and defensively to try and remedy those. The Raiders will be receiving the second half kickoff, so they'll have a chance to cut into this lead. Um, so we see Mikey Galligan down there at the 50, warming up with Nate Sampson. Uh, we have finished the, I believe, the mandatory NFHS coming out of the halftime warm-up period there, so uh, we can kick off the second <laughs> half. <laughs> so is it. Situation's been out of the locker room for about 10 minutes now. Uh, and North Quincy was a little late coming out, and as you said there, they were just kind of standing around, not doing much. They were, quote-unquote, warming up. Um, so. so. Look for North to put together a good kick return here to get things started. Uh, the couple kick returns that they, the few that they've been able to have. Uh, the first one, they had a really good wall set up towards the bottom of the screen here towards the north sideline and then situate adjusted right after that and they immediately kicked away from Rodriguez Smith and away from that wall uh, so we'll see if North will try that wall again or if they just go back to more of a middle type return all right here we go finally underway here in the second half as you might remember North Quincy won the opening toss and elected to defer their option to the second half All right, this kick is going to go out of bounds at the 20-yard line. Rolls out of bounds, and that's going to be a penalty. So, looks like Coach Ryan Craig might be trying to get some direction there from the official on the spot and whether they're going to re-kick or just take the penalty from there. So, their flag is down at the 19-yard line. Kick out of bounds. Ball will be placed on the 35-yard line. First down. It's basically a 15-yard penalty equivalent from the touchback, I guess, yeah. if you will. So uh, Raiders are going to elect to take the ball, and they're going to take it on the hash as well. So Raiders are going to use, they're going to go with the three-receiver set up top. You know, single receiver to the bottom. Ben Wallenjohn by himself down here with the Samson brothers and Will Conley. To the three receiver side. And they think they hand off to Huda. Quick pass to Conley. He's complete the 50 yard line and it almost makes a man miss. Nice job there to hang on to make the tackle was number 10, Ryan Zona. But a big play there by North Quincy to start the second half. And all the way up into Situate territory go the Raiders, as you see here in the replay. Great job. They faked the trap play. They pulled the guard to uh, pull the inside backers and Will Conley sneaks in right behind it on a quick little slant route, little uh, pop route there. So Great opening play to start the second half. Get this offense moving. Give it to Hudak. Hudak goes up the middle. Does a nice job to keep that pile moving forward. And they're going to spot him down at about the 43-yard line. 
Nice run there on first down. As we said, the Raiders in the first half average six and a half yards of carry. As we take a look at the replay, Noah Baker with a good job blocking out at the hole there. Um, since you're looking for a hole, but uh, Baker with just a great block. Hudex done a great job all night uh, running downhill. Uh, sometimes you see guys, they try and be a little bit more patient with it, trying to wait for stuff to develop or uh, try and bounce outside. Hudex done a great job. He's just going right downhill, first, first day lady season, uh, really getting all the yards he can. Second down and about six now for the Raiders. Hudak again trying to cut outside, cuts back up the middle now. Nice job here by Ben Hudak, and he's going to have the first down and more for North Hudak Quincy. The and they're going to spot him down at the 32-yard line. Another big run there by Hudak. Uh, Ben's a tough player, and he's going both ways tonight. As you see in the replay, great kick out there by Taylor Marquez. Uh, and Hudak's able to just bounce it outside. The linebacker situate filled the holes really nicely on the inside, uh, creating opportunities on the edge. Um, I believe so. Citroen, I think, is um, you know, we mentioned North's uh, down some guys. Citroen, I think, is down some guys too. Their leading tackler, uh, Willis Ames. I haven't seen him out there. He's an inside bagger, but he's a big kid. Um, they're missing him, and it looks like North's been really targeting that area and taking advantage of that. Conley goes in motion, and they're going to give it to him. Oh, nice cut. Conley still on his feet, cuts back to the near side of the field at the 20 yard line, the 10 yard line at the 5, and will get pushed out of bounds at about the 2. Great run there by Will Conley. Sets a first and goal for North Quincy. Great job by Will Conley. They ran in the first half. They put the brakes on as we see on the replay. Situate does a good job. They try and box it in, keep it inside. He sees that lane, cuts it up, and then he cuts it all the way back. Great job there by center Michael Finney to not uh, get any blocks in the back or any penalties there. He just kind of was able to stand in the way in terms of uh, being able to create that extra lane. Galligan lines up, trying to push it in, and no signal yet from the officials. And it looks like he's going to be short. down at the just inside the goal line. So it's going to be second down in goal from inside the one. I would be surprised. Well, it's going to come right back, and they're going to try that again. So this is going to be the uh, Jalen Hurts getting pushed in from the back there. Yeah, as you see, you got uh, Taylor Marquez and Ben Hudak sitting literally in the A gap. All right, and they're pushing, pushing, and touchdown, North Quincy. Uh, I don't know how Ben Hudak ended <laughs> up with the ball there. I was <laughs> going to say the same thing. I'm not sure what happened I there. I looked away for two seconds, and I see him looking away there. Great job on the initial push. I think Ben just, like, ripped it out. Maybe he didn't hear the whistle. I, I don't know, but, hey, he, he played to the whistle. That's the best <laughs> part about Ben. He plays to the whistle, and he gives you everything. Um you know, he's awesome. So, great job there by the Raiders. Uh, talk about being able to get a couple first downs, be able to get inside the red zone and score a touchdown. And they, they checked all the boxes there in terms of a, a great textbook opening drive to start the second half. Puts them right back in. We got Alvin Nicola to kick the PAT. And and kick is up, and it is good. Is it was good. a good job on the whole thing by Conley as well. Looked like it came back to him. He, a little ball of initiative. He was able to get it down and... Nicole was able to get it off in time. That extra point uh, could be a big difference. The two points that North got in that first half off of the uh, wild snap on the extra point that Alvin Nicole was able to throw to Ben Waljohn for two points. If the game holds out like this, that extra point could be the difference. So, uh, Great job by the North Special Teams unit there. All right, so North comes down and does a nice job of putting a, a touchdown on the board. So 28-22 with 9.09 left to go here in the third quarter. Again, North came right down there receiving the second half kickoff and does an impressive drive to put some points on the board. What were the details of that, John? Kind of like plays and yards. Uh, where are we here? That drive summary brought to you by Martin Dunham. It was well, six really plays and 65 yards. Brought by John Clear. You have the tablet <laughs> in front of you. <laughs> All right, kickoff there is going to be field at the 17-yard line. Robinson with some space down the left sideline. One man to beat, and he's going to go all the way. William Robinson with a huge return for the Sailors, and they come right back to put six points on the board. Oh, what an answer. William Robinson's having himself quite a game tonight. Now, we mentioned in the first half, he's one of the game breakers for Situate. Uh, you take a look at the replay. Raiders try and squib it right up the middle, try and not give a return. Uh, Robinson's able to get ahead of steam and uh, unfortunately 
Looks like they might have missed a lane there on the kickoff team. And Robinson was able to see the seam and speed right through. He's only just a junior. 5'8", 170. He's kind of like a, a Will Conley uh, type player. Quick, shifty. Um, got some speed to him. All right, Sam Aller will attempt the extra point now for the Sailors. And the Raiders were elated on the sidelines, but quickly now deflated. And extra point attempt is up and good by Allard. So with the kick made, it is now 35-22. And again, North Quincy thought they might have had some momentum here. And unfortunately, in the kickoff, they can't hold. It was almost similar to the script last week down at Pembroke in the second half. They got the ball to start. Uh, second half, uh, I don't think they scored it. They didn't score in the first drive, but when they get the ball back in the second drive, they scored, and then uh, Pembroke returned the kick back. The North was able to spawn right back and score again, so Raiders will be looking for something similar along those lines, being able to take the ball back. Offense has a lot of firepower, a lot of potential, uh, especially the running game, the passing game, uh, hitting on big plays all night. Uh, you get situate on their, situate on their feet. Now, uh, We'll see what the game plan is for Situate on the on this kick return here. They've been trying to kick away from Rodriguez Smith. They've been going at Conley the past couple. Or towards the Situate left side. All right, towards Conley again bounces and Conley's gonna feel it at the six yard line. Trying to look for some blockers ahead of him. And spins away from one tackle and finally get brought down at about the 18-yard line. Yeah. So this time they did, they definitely kicked away from Rodriguez Smith. The, lot, the last time, or to open the half, they tried to kick it short and ended up going out of bounds. So you can tell Citrus really trying to work the sidelines directionals, trying to make the returners run onto the ball before getting it. Ball's going to be at the 18. So, yeah, looks like they got Taylor Marquez in, so they're going to go with a two running back set. Handoff goes to Hudak up the middle. But great and tackle the there. The Situates number 36, or is that 38? Is that the mysterious? I think it was 34. No, we'll take a look and see if we I can. Had, I, I had a lot of blue there. Yeah. So, <laughs> hey, it was a great great tackle in the hole there. Oh, that was number 32 on the tackle. That was Rodan Manning, a name we've called a couple times here tonight. Yeah, he's done a nice job. Uh, North tried a little counteraction. They pulled guard uh, and pulled Marquez across the formation. The situation was able to shoot the gap, make a big play. Um, and North Quincy's got an extra guy in the field here. They're trying to run him off. And it looks like they did without any penalty nothing call yet, there. Yet, nothing yet. Galgan looking. Going downfield and incomplete. Was trying to find number 14, Ben Wallenjom. And Wallenjom is going to come up limping here. Hopefully he's okay. Yeah, he might have landed awkwardly there. Oh. Uh, that might be a, a, cramp, a cramp. Yeah, yep. hopefully, yeah. It might have just been something where he, he landed and it just kind of stretched something a little bit more. Um, but uh, a couple of those guys on the sideline pulling him off the field there and then trying to stretch him out with the athletic trainer. Um, ben, as we mentioned, had a big game last week. Uh, it was his first real action at receiver. Uh, he was kind of one of those next guys called up and he answered the bell. Three catches, 133 yards. Uh, he's a big target down the field. He's like 6'3", 6'4", athletic. Uh, gives Raiders another option in the pass game, uh, along with the Samson brothers and Will Conley. I pass over in the flat to Hudak. Hudak gets across the 20 and will get brought down quickly after that to about the 22. Actually, they're going to say at the 23 is where he get brought down. Uh, Hudak did a good job there. He made something out of nothing. It was a pretty hard-earned few yards as you see in the replay. Fake the toss, go with the screen. The Situate defense was pretty alert to it. Uh, they were ready for the screen. They, as you see, they had a bunch of jerseys over there uh, ready for that one. Uh, so Raiders try the safer option. 
terms of instead of pushing it down the field, they try a quick little screen maybe to get the first down, but they're going to play field position here with Michael Nista back to punt. And now North Quincy's shorter man, so they get the 11th man onto the field. Low snap. Nista fields the ground ball and gets it off. Nice job there by Nista and a great kick as well. And I'm not sure if Situa touched it or not. I didn't see any flags pop out. Or excuse me, beanbag. Yeah, North, North, North sideline thought that he touched it. Yeah, it was very, very close. It, it, it was very close. I mean, North's doing a good job trying to sell that there. Sam Allen was back for Situa. And I think it was just a weird hop. Something happened where he kind of last second just aborted trying to field it. Um, I think had the Raiders known, as we see on the replay, I th they were banking on the fact that he touched it, and that's why I think they went after it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's pretty tight. It's hard to tell uh, just because it's, it's it's like you're looking at it from the other end there. <laughs> it's very close. It's very close. I, I, I think it missed. I think it did miss him. Yeah, it was I very it close. Missed. But I think North was banking on the fact they touched it because otherwise they should have. They would have let that roll a little bit more. Obviously, they were just jumping on it, being alert. Um, but you like to see the hustle there. That was, I think, Tommy Wirtz down there. He's now playing some defensive end with Wallenjohn getting stretched out. Good All tackle right. by uh, Brody Baker on that middle run. The handoff goes to Alex Burrow. And Burrow will get up to the 30 yard line, we'll see here in the replay. Take a look at the replay. Ariel White was there too. He just missed it. Came right behind him. Uh, still only a two yard game for Situate. North Quincy defense can be asked once again to have to make a big play, a big stop. You know, tight end wing to the bottom. Ocean, that's their second tight end. Belson over to the left side, and let's see, Lawson Foley with a catch and run, and he's going to get up to midfield. Actually, going to say he stepped out of bounds at their own 48-yard line, as we'll see here in the replay. Nonetheless, a big first down for the Sailors. Motion across, just came on a quick out, so good job there. Uh, broke the first tackle. Ariel White comes over to clean it up. They set first down for Situate. He utilized... Uh, Lawson Foley and number 89, Roman Glowak, as kind of the two tight end, tight bodies. Uh, they're long, but they're uh, pretty thin, but they're strong in the run game. Our handoff goes to Burrow again, and he's fighting his way forward up to the North Quincy 44 okay, yard, shooting to North Quincy 46. Tackle there made by number 54, Michael Finney, fought off his block and caught the running back from behind there. See Ben Wallenjohn checking back in, so that's good. News for the Raiders. Good job there by senior Tommy Wirtz. This past few plays filling in at defensive end. We've called his name a lot throughout the season so far on special teams, uh, whether it's snapping or uh, on the kickoff teams. Second down, about four now for Situate. Burrow gets the handoff, trying to get to the outside, being pursued by four Raiders, and... Looks like Burrow. for all that running, it's going to be no gain, as we'll see here on the replay. Might have gotten like one. Taylor Marquez shot through the initial pressure, and Paul Gloom is chasing, but Burrell's pretty quick kid. Uh, good job there by, I think that was Nate Sampson that ended up knocking him out of bounds. Lost one. And they mark him back down at the 47 yard line. So he said a loss of one on the play. So I'll bring up now a third and five. Three receiver set. What's going to get a lined up top? Here we go. Jackson Belson, quarterback for the Sailors, 6'2 senior. Quick pass is complete over to the left side. And fighting his way forward. Looks like it was Bronson, Bronson Bossy, excuse me, on the return. Uh, 89, oh, no, I think. 89, excuse me, that was Roman Glowick. And we'll take a look at the replay here, but first down for yeah. the Sailors. Hitch it runs all hitches. Uh, do a good job getting right to the stick. Right to the sticks, excuse me. Uh, North DB's got caught back pedal in there a little bit uh, too much, and Citroen does a good job. They just hit it right in rhythm, right at the stick for a first down. So 
Sisha doing a good job here taking kind of the air out of the clock a little bit. Gorilla with a run up the middle again. And they're going to mark him down at the 32 for a gain of four. This is where the situates uh, really dangerous in terms of their passing game is pretty effective. They've had some quick outs, some quick hitches, you know, a quick game where the ball is getting out for the rush gets there. And their running game has been pretty impressive as well, picking up yards when they need to. The first half they were averaging seven yards, almost eight a carry, and I'm sure they're right around that still. Uh, see the Raiders have adjusted. They've tried to bring a little bit more pressure up the middle and on the inside. Take the handoff pass down the middle of the field, oh. and it is almost picked off there. Rodriguez Smith was right there. I'll tell you, the Blake Nelson saw it coming too, and he tried to reverse course, and he almost got his hands on that cutting back too. Take a look at the replay here. As you can see, Rodriguez Smith coming in, and uh, with the intended receiver as well, Lawson Foley. The Blake Nelson opened up to it, and the receiver cut behind him. He almost made a big play on that too. To create another third and medium situation here for the Sailors. Two for five in the first half, which it was. Two for two on fourth down. So, big key for the Raiders. They've got to be able to get a couple stops here and get the ball back. Third down. Belson's pass over to the left side is complete, and it'll be a first down for the Sailors. It was over to number 26, Charlie Hartwell. Hartwell, I believe, caught the first touchdown, right, John? I believe so, yes. Yeah, good little route there. Whip route, he broke inside like he was running a slant. A few steps. Playing on his inside foot, broke it right back outside, and Rodriguez Smith uh, was right there, but uh, a good route there by Situate. Doing a good job keeping the Raiders on their toes. I believe it was Lawson Foley who had the first touchdown for for Situate back in the first quarter there. As I look at my scoring drive. All right, so this is like Situate's kind of meat grinder, taking the air out, heavy run formation. They're going with the split back, and normally you get a lot of inside dives, and then once you start really playing aggressively on the inside, they're going to fake that and then hit a second man coming around the outside. So it's going to have to be alert to that. Something that Situate hasn't shown this year necessarily as we take a look at the replay. Got that back coming right up the middle, and it's just everyone's up front is just blocking man on. The big, uh, the big man, uh, the big play is going to be the second man as they hit it there. Uh, Robinson had one yard on that last play, and this play goes now to Alex Burrow, and Burrow going to be right at the first down marker, and he goes past it. So it'll be first down for Situate at the North Quincy 14 yard line. Run there Situate by Robinson is a, a good offensive set for Situate in terms of they're able to get their two running backs on the field at the same time. Uh, ben Wallen jump coming off, he might need to get some more treatment there. He's been fighting through it, uh, but he's frustrated. All right, first down now for Situate at the North Quincy 14 yard line. Burrow uh, with the handoff, and excuse me, that was Robinson on the handoff, and looks like they're going to get. One yard in the play. There's a man down on the field for North Quincy. Good job on that tackle there. Uh, Paul Glenn and uh, Brody Baker in on that stop. I'll tell you, North has been battling uh, these past few weeks. I mentioned they've had some guys go down. And they've had a lot of young guys stepping up, uh, filling in and making plays. Uh, was, North still got a lot of guys going both ways and it's, at times it, it takes its toll and Citroen, you know, really grinding it out here. Um, so, I don't know if that's Hudak maybe. Yeah, I think Hudak might have been a couple of cramps there. You've seen him a couple of times, had to get stretched out. He's played hard all night. He goes both ways. He's He's been battling. Uh, he's nicked up. He missed the first game of the year as well. Um, Despite that, he, he's tough. He goes both ways. He's playing safety. He's covering a lot of ground there. He's been the primary running back the past couple of weeks with uh, Jordan Mahoney out. Uh, they're asking a lot out of him, but and he's responded. Uh, but the Raiders are going to have to call uh, next man up again here. Second down and eight. Nelson, quick pass over to the right side. is complete, and it looks like it was Foley on the reception. 
And they're going to mark him down. And another man is down for North Quincy. I believe that's number 13, Cam Sampson, down on the field. Yeah, he, he, he might have gotten caught in the tackle there. Yeah, he came in on the tackle along with Blake Nelson, freshman for North. Uh, you hate to see this. Back here at Veterans Memorial Stadium, uh, where the game has been paused for a little while now, uh, where um, Cam Sampson, number 13 for North Quincy, was down on the field after making a tackle. Uh, he had to be, unfortunately, um, put on a, a stretcher and uh, put into an ambulance and taken away to, I'm assuming, to an area hospital. Um, so hopefully he's okay. Um, I'm not sure the full extent of what the injury is. Uh, I'm not going to speculate either, but um, obviously he was serious enough that, you know, he was taken away, and uh, hopefully he's okay. Uh, both teams uh, huddled up on the sidelines, as you might have seen there, and coaches uh, talked to them, and um, the game is going to continue. So our uh, thoughts and prayers out there to, uh, to Cam and to his family. Um, um, Martin, I don't know. I, you know, his, his brother Nate is... I didn't. See, did he uh, st still down the field? I, I can't see if he is. But uh, yes, he's a corner, Johnny. Okay, he's so he he's so a, he's, he's outside the shot here, but he's 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 on a corner, and so then uh, he's got a younger brother too, Ryan. He's on the sideline, uh, quarterback. So um, so anyway, so again, uh, hopefully everything is okay and just precautionary for uh, for taking him to the hospital. All right, so um, as we line up here, it is going to be third down and two for Situate. And I believe that it's going to let the clock expire here in the third quarter. Um, yeah, it was a tackle in the field of yeah, play. Yeah, tackle so. in the field of play. So this is going to let the clock run out here, and teams are going to switch sides to go down and begin the fourth quarter. Um, obviously, very tough whenever this happens on a football field. Uh, and for teams to come back and try to go back up and crank it up to full speed. Uh, that's one thing with, with football, Martin. You, you can't play half speed because then, unfortunately, this leads to more injuries. So you right. really have to, to get back out there and, and get focused uh, and, uh, you know, try to get focused on the game as best you can after something like this has happened. Yeah, we'll, we'll see kind of how the game sort of develops here. We saw a situation was... Really, try, you know, taking the air out, holding the ball. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if we kind of just see more of that. Kind of you know, keep, keep the clock rolling as long as possible in terms of if tournament seeding purposes right now. Situates in position to get maximum points, so I'm sure. I mean, I'm sure they'll be looking to score in this drive to kind of cap it off, but uh, they won't need additional. You know, there's no incentive to really run it up, if, if you will. Right. Um, during that break as well, uh, it was a, a, a very a nice gesture in, in, in class from head coach Herb Devine from Situate. He, he came over as well, and he spent a, uh, a pretty lengthy period of time over um, with the North coaching staff and everything over there as well. So um, it's kind of that human element here. Situate's going to go full house, team backfield. All right, they hand it off to William Robinson, and Robinson will go in for the touchdown for the first play of the fourth quarter. So it's uh, one of Situate's other full house backfield sets uh, that they can go to, T backfield. That's, that's one that they, they pull out less frequently, but uh, when you get the running backs, as you see, uh, lead through the hole there. It was number 11, Alex Burrill. It looked like number 32, Ronan Manning. Uh, so you get a, you know, a physical skill guy uh, lead through the hole on a linebacker. Uh, get it in the end zone for Situate. Our extra point attempt is up and it is good by Sam Allard. So now be a 20 point lead for Situate, 42 to 22. He said Situate offense has been really rolling the past few weeks in, in, term, in the 30s and the 40s. Um, after a slower start to the year, I think the the younger up front, um, or younger in general, they got some skill guys too that are on the younger end uh, as well. Uh, the quarterback senior uh, Jackson Belson, he he played a lot last year, so that's a big key to their operation. I, anytime you get an experienced quarterback back there, it expedites certain parts of your offense. 
Uh, the ability for him to kind of manage the game, manage the huddle. Um, and Citra does a really good job top top to bottom, I know, uh, as most programs do. They, they're pretty consistent with what they run at all levels. So when these players are coming up to the varsity, they've, they've been in that system for a while, and I'm pretty sure they run a pretty similar system in their youth program. I know they're teamed up with Cohasset. Uh, so these guys got a lot of experience in the in the basic foundation of how Sidgwick wants to play the game. Right, it's a short kick and it's going to go out of bounds. And out of bounds at the 33-yard line. So we'll see. North is looks like the, the offense coming out, so they're just going to elect to take the ball. They'll take the spot as opposed to the re-kick. Let's we'll see what the plate of attack is here for the North offense. Yeah. Kick out of bounds. There'll be a five-yard penalty added on. Okay. So the they're going to spot the ball at the 39-yard line. Five yards from where it went out of bounds. Yeah. All right, so Raiders come out. Gallagher in the shotgun for North. They're spread out here so that I think if by North they're going to attack, they're going to keep playing. This is what you like to see. They're going to play hard, and they're going to play with the final whistle. Great throw, and I think he was in bounds. That's a great catch uh, by no, Nate I, Sampson. Uh, Sampson caught it, but they're going to say he was out of no, bounds. I thought, I, my fault. I thought I saw the roof. That might have been somebody else's arm I saw. Yeah. Trying to <laughs> make the gesture. Well, yeah, we'll see He's, here on the replay. Galligan did a nice job here of just trying to get away from uh, from Situ there. You can see number 53, Amari Mendez, giving chase. Uh, and... So you play. can see, yeah, the official right there says it was out of bounds. So we'll look on offense now. Uh, Marquise Rodriguez-Smith, I believe, is a uh, wide receiver that we'll see there. Number three, he's coming towards us. Uh, he's in the slot. Uh, another one of the very talented athletes the Raiders can utilize on the offensive side. Right, second down and ten, Galligan looking to pass. Not a lot downfield, trying to get out of harm's way. And he's going to get sacked and brought down. The ball comes loose at the end. He would get sacked there by Aiden McCormick, and I believe they said he was down before the ball came out, so it'll remain North ball. He ended up gaining one yard out of that, so um, positive yardage nonetheless. Um, but give credit to these guys; they'll play hard and they'll they'll keep going right to the whistle. They're gonna keep pushing for points. Uh, it's gonna create a third and nine here for the North. See, they've been able to get behind the Citroën secondary a couple times vertically. We'll see if maybe they can sneak somebody back there. You know, two receivers each, each side, excuse me. All right, so it is third down and nine now for North Quincy. Galligan rolling out, being pursued again by Defender. Throws it, and it is incomplete. Was looking for a Ben Hudak, but I believe William Robinson, number 21, you see your screen there, just tipped it away. And we'll take a look at the replay. Yeah, Robinson was hawking that the whole way. He was he was right with Mikey, and he was coming. He was a heat-seeking missile coming for that ball there, um, which nobody was really able to get open. Mikey tried to extend it as long as he could. Uh, before Chase Citrus did a really good job. They sent that late pressure, too, right up the middle, which flushed him off pretty quickly. And that'll force the punt team on. We got Michael Vista back to punt again for the Raiders. Yeah, nice kick there by Nista. It's going to take a friendly roll. And still going down. And Situa fakes the pickup. And North will touch it down at the 19-yard line. I expect the ball to be kept on the ground here. I'm sure Citra will use as much clock as they can here. They're not going to want to turn the ball over and give North any more shots at the end zone. Well, I'm, you know, unforced errors. Uh, North defense will be looking to make a play. Maybe get a turnover, force fumble. They'll be looking to strip the ball in the piles. 
see if they can make something happen here. Uh, as we've seen, you know, first out, uh, first quarter, first half, North has the potential offensively to put up points pretty quickly. Um, thinking back to the Will Conley uh, play, where it was you know 80 plus yard, 70 plus yard touchdown play, you know, two play drive type deal. So, North definitely get that quick strike ability if they can get their hands on the ball. All right, Citra comes to the line. Ball at the 19-yard line. First down and 10. And off goes up the middle. And getting across the 25 to the 26 goes Alex Burrow. Tackle there made by uh, sophomore linebacker Brady Craig. Uh, another one in the, in the Craig family line of uh, very talented linebackers. As we see on the replay, he comes uh, through the hole. He's good off his block. Um, good on the back, uh, but uh, Burrow's a pretty strong runner. Uh, but fills right in like his uh, older brother Matt. Uh, shout out Matt, he's in the Marines uh, now. I know he's uh, in training with Brian Rodriguez, two teammates two, uh, from the backfield uh, tandem a couple years ago. So shout out to those guys. I'm sure they're watching. I know that they're always uh, they're always texting us looking for updates or ways to watch the game. So <laughs> kind of gives them a piece of home, I guess. I Burrow with the handoff. And... I say no gain, it looks like, on that play. We're going to bring up third down here as the clock keeps rolling. Uh, Michael Nista checking back in as uh, the Raiders get a pretty consistent uh, rotation up front with Brody Baker and uh, Mr. Nista rotating in on defensive tackle. Uh, Brody Baker goes both ways. He starts offensive tackle, left tackle as well, so any chance you can kind of get guys a play here or there and try and grab one uh, this is showing a lot of a lot of potential this year he's pretty aggressive pretty strong uh, even though he's on the smaller end Burrow again on the carry and looks oh, like he's, he's gonna have enough for the first down the last second effort there by Burrow kept his feet moving and because of that he's gonna get across the 30 to the 31 and move the chains for the first down Good push there, so we see uh, Brody come back in. But uh, you know, Michael Nista, along with his brother Joe, the two, uh, those two have been working hard the past couple of years in the weight room. I know those guys have really lived in there, and they've really improved themselves over the past couple of years. And it's good to see those guys be able to contribute on Friday nights, uh, and they'll be back next year as well as they're uh, both juniors. With that carry, Burrow is now at 90 yards rushing with one touchdown. William Robinson has 96 yards rushing and three touchdowns. Our situate waiting to the very last second here to get a snap off. Belson going to keep it himself. Big hit there by, looks like it was number two, Marquez for North Quincy to bring him down. And they're going to get a gain of about four in that play up to the 34. Not sure if there was just a little mishap in the backfield there. I don't know that Belson was really keeping that. We haven't seen him run. I'm not sure that he's a running or an option type quarterback. So I think he just kind of took it there just to kind of avoid any mishaps with the ball. Good hit there, as you said, by Marquez. Leading tackler for North this year. Uh, good athlete. He's, got a, he's kind of one of those guys, as a lot of them are, for North, he's a uh, linebacker hybrid type guys where he can, he plays outside linebacker, he, he plays inside. He's out in coverage. We've seen him a couple times tonight make some plays, and nice job there by the North defense on second down. William Robinson on the run, as we see here in the replay. Had really nowhere to go. Yeah, right on cue. Marquez comes right through. Paul Glenn gets the initial holdup from defensive end, and Marquez bursts right through that gap uh, to help finish it off. All right, mark the ball back to the 32-yard line, so lo loss of one there on the play. Coming up on the six-minute mark here of the game. So we see uh, Situa doing some personnel changes here, so look for them to air it out a little bit. Maybe they brought in some of these receivers uh, back in. Charlie Hotwell checked back in. See Sam Allard there, number four on screen. Number eight, Lawson Foley. He hasn't come off. And a timeout was called 
Yeah, I think there was Before just one the flag. The clock. Yeah, yeah, I think there was just one the clock run down. Yep. So. See, Citral playing for something. Do they keep that same personnel group in there? We've yeah. seen them. Time out, Citral. Thank you, Mr. Staja. Here, pointing towards the Situate end, the Situate huddle. Uh, we've seen a couple times Situates, the little smoke and mirrors. They have some motion, uh, some, you know, fake to the back one way and screen the other. Uh, so possibility we'll see Situate utilize some form of a screen to kind of keep the throws short and safe. Yeah, they're gonna have a third down and eight when they come back here. 5:59 left to go in the game. A good look at the rate of defense coming out here. They've scrapped and battled all night. See some of those guys. Marquise Rodriguez-Smith, Nate Sampson, Blake Nelson, uh, Ben Hudak. A couple of those names in the secondary, especially uh, you know Blake Nelson being a freshman playing uh, free safety. That's a pretty tough spot to play in, uh, in a big situation. And you look at inside linebackers, Brady Craig, Noah Baker. Uh, we've seen Ariel White a little bit. Taylor Marquez uh, in the interior linebacker court. They've done a good job tonight. Burke goes in motion. Belson passes over to the right side. Oh, Incomplete. Nice, nice job there by Will Conley. Pass was intended for number eight, Lawson Foley. But a nice job, as you'll see on the replay here, of um, uh, Conley, excuse me, to get his hand in there and knock it away right there. Yeah, Will's had a bigger role in the offensive side this year. We haven't seen him as much on the defensive end, but last year he played a good amount of corner. He can play a little safety as well. Uh, so it's nice to have that flexibility of guys. I know that uh, North does a really good job in terms of their practice playing and practice schedule. They get a lot of guys involved on both sides of the ball, making sure that they're prepared for any situation. And Nate Sanson thought about taking it but is going to elect to let it roll alright it's going to roll all the way down to the 20 yard line and that's where North Quincy will start this drive with 5.38 left to go in the game we got the offense coming back on it's good to see uh, we got Ben Wall and John he's jogging back on so uh, he looks like he might have suffered some, from some cramps earlier but he's all stretched out hydrated like to see that we got uh, Mr. Conley back out there. Uh, five linemen up front that have uh, worked hard all night trying to keep Gallagher protected and create holes in the running game. Talked about earlier uh, the offensive line: Brody Baker, Noah Baker, Michael Finney, Ray Marcel, and Mike Ekpobi. Tonight, uh, those that five, the unit of five, has done the work. All right, Galligan in the shotgun for North Quincy. He's going to hand it off right up the middle to Ben Hudak, number 21. 21 ben Hudak. Senior running back for North Quincy. And Hudak's going to get across the 25 to the 26. Yeah, Hudak's going to be around 80 yards That's tonight. A uh, he's had a solid game. And, and North's done a great job all night when they've been able to stay on schedule and be able to run the ball. They've, that interior run game, that trap game, has been there all night. Um back in the middle so you can definitely tell the North coach and staff sees something that they like and they're doing a good job being able to hit it unfortunately at this stage of the game you know being down 20 doesn't help them but uh, oh there we go another oh, big one Hudak was at 79 yards Martin and now he's going to be over 100 with a big run here he's going to get up to the 45 yard line great run there by Hudak and a first down for North Quincy great job there by Ben we see in the replay trap again Noel Baker comes across um, but the thing as he tries the nice little hurdle there. I think he thought somebody was going to go low. Uh, but nice gap scheme, meaning that, you know, the linemen are protecting certain gaps or blocking certain gaps. And when you create that horizontal movement, it allows, it opens up cutback lanes in different areas. And Ben's done a good job finding it. Even though the trap was designed to go to the right, um, they were able to block the inside gaps where he could cut back to the left. Looking downfield, Conley wide open again to 20, 10, 15. Touchdown, North Quincy. Conley again, snuck behind the defense and goes in for the big score. Great connection there. And uh, as we take a look at the replay, play action fake. Mikey's got time. He's able to get his feet set as well as he can. And I'm sure he couldn't get that out fast enough to Will. You could <laughs> tell he was trying to get it out there. He saw him right away. Great job. And uh, with that touchdown pass, that's his 12th touchdown pass of the year. That sets the... Uh, the new North Quincy standard uh, for a single season. 
Um, so it's a good job there by Mikey. Congratulations uh, to him, even though, it, you know, in a losing effort. But, you know, it just goes to show he's had an incredible season so far. Uh, 12 touchdowns. He's only thrown three interceptions, so he's really ta he's really matured in that aspect. Yeah, it looked like, the, I don't know if they got kicked. I think it was partially blocked yeah, or not. I, did, but I think it was partially tipped there. So, nonetheless, it is short of its goal. So North Quincy will take a 42-20, uh, uh, to 20, excuse me, a situate on top here with 417 left to go. We're going to take a look at the replay and see if the ball got tipped. Oh, I'm sure we're going to take a look at the uh, the touchdown here. Yeah, so great job. Just snuck right behind, and you know, Will's had to do a lot of running tonight. <laughs> um, but that's the big play potential that he has. But uh, going back to Mikey, uh, there might not be – you know, Mikey's worked as hard as anyone within the program in, in, in the off season. I know he works with a uh, quarterback coach. Uh, it's a pretty uh, well-known guy, uh, program, the N2 uh, quarterback academy. Uh, a lot of the top guys in the area go work with uh, that program. Uh, and he's down there in the middle of winter. Uh, he plays lacrosse in the spring. I know that he's he works out when he can with them, in addition to doing the strength conditioning program with the uh, football team as well throughout the offseason and the summer. So uh, it's really nice to see you know, him. He's put in a lot of work, and he's really matured on the mental side. I think that's like the biggest aspect for him. Last year, he played a little bit. There was a lot of turnovers. We saw a lot of those rollouts where he's throwing more of those 50-50 balls. We've seen them cut down on that a little bit this year. Uh, just the fact that they haven't turned the ball over as much as an off for the offense. They haven't turned it over. That's really helped them succeed. All right, Noel tries the onside kick, and nice job there. So we can get the number, number 15, Joseph Burke, coming up to field that ground ball and keep control of it there. So nice job by Burke, and Situ will take over, and they're going to say at the North Quincy 49. So, almost, uh, you know, it's probably as good of a look as an onside as you can get for North. Uh, it's pretty regulated how you can kick them. You can't, uh, you can't like, drive it into the ground to get, like, that one hop and then get it eight feet in the air. You're not allowed to do, like, a short pop-up type of deal. Uh, it's basically you got to be pretty much like that. you got to grub it along the ground and hope that you get a good bounce. Citra's going to go full house, double tight, T backfield, try and run it out. All right, Robinson on the carry over to the right side and just does get pushed out of bounds at the 38-yard line. Should be enough for a first down. Pushed out there by Blake Nelson. Uh, and Russell will blow a whistle. Uh, the play banged up a little bit as we see some guys shifting in and out here. Uh, Coach Ryan Craig's going to get some new bodies in there. See number 63, or 53, excuse me, coming in. Uh, don't have a 53 for the North roster, unfortunately. Um, Ariel White coming back in. He's been back and forth all night, uh, helping out at inside linebacker. Michael Nista checking back in. And then uh, Brady Craig did, doing a good job as the uh, from that middle inside linebacker position. He's got some help from Ryan Wirtz. They're trying to count up whether they have 11. Seeing leadership here from some of the guys, uh, Paul Glenn trying to get help the defense get aligned in the right spots here with the backfield and two tight ends set. Situate running right now is Robinson on the carry again. Yep, he's gonna be over 100, right, John? Uh, let's see, they mark him down at the 34 yard line, and we'll see where that puts him at 110. So, yes. You mentioned earlier, uh, or I mentioned earlier, Ben Hudak with that last run that he had, he'd be over 100 yards. He's at 99. Oh. So uh, he's at 99. Uh, Will Conley didn't get the chance to mention uh, 167 yards receiving and two touchdowns here tonight. That's um, like the great balance of like the North receiving core. It's like every week there's a different guy that's getting like four, three or four catches, like 150 yards. They just break big plays. Last week it was Ben Wall and John. A couple weeks it was Cam Sanson. Uh, this week it's uh, Will Conley. Uh, makes it tough to game plan and defend against because you can't really double cover one guy if you, the other three can hit you big as well. So 
We see Tommy uh, Tommy Wirtz coming in, the older brother of Ryan Wirtz. So good to see senior defensive end uh, get some time in here. He's really improved over the course of the past couple years as well. Burrell had that last run for Situate. He's at 92 yards rushing. Yeah, they've had a lot of success. And they're getting it like six, seven yards a pop too. Counter. Right, Burrell gets it again, crosses the 30, and we'll see if they get him to the 29. Yeah, it's the 29-yard line. Close to the line oh, Brady Craig in on that tackle. And the mysterious number 53. Good play up front by him. 53 lining up at uh, a defensive tackle spot. So we tick down now. We're getting about uh, two minutes situate. Uh, we got fourth and one. Let's see, I'm sure, I'm sure they're gonna just. They might just try and go for it to get the first, and they can run it out. Especially with the, the 14 point differential, Citroen's gonna want to hold on to the ball. I'm sure they're not gonna want to give it back to North if they don't have to. Right. Uh, I see Herb Devine right at the stick, so I'm sure he's gonna call a timeout. Wait when the play clock hits zero, because Citroen offense really isn't in any position to attack here. So I'm sure that they're gonna line up with that. T backfield, see if they can get the one yard and just run it out. We got 146 left. Uh, but really impressive how North, the North's fought. Uh, they've had a couple mistakes, unfortunately, go against them in terms of uh, fumbles, and turnovers, penalties. Um, but they haven't backed down. They came out, started the second half. They put a nice drive together, scored right out coming out of the break. And even when Citroen scored in the kick return, North has still kept battling, kept trying to answer back. Uh, they got a touchdown on their last drive. Um, so that, those are the encouraging signs you like to see. Um, so they got a tough test next week here at home against Hanover, as you mentioned earlier when we were discussing the schedule. That'll be senior night for the Raiders as well, so it's always a nice, a nice night, a nice ceremony for families. Uh, be able to celebrate them. Uh, North's got a, a, a pretty good senior contingent in terms of numbers uh, larger than last year's. So it uh, be good to see those guys get on it. All right, fourth and one. Belson under center. He keeps it himself, and it'll be a first down for a situate. That'll be enough for a situate first down. Yeah, the clock winds, so first down. I imagine... Uh, I don't. North hasn't called any timeout, so we'll see if Situa just elects to knee it out. Um, you see, usually as an offensive coach, you get the kneel chart if you're going to take the kneel on there, um, especially with no timeouts being called. The, sometimes the refs are a little bit more liberal with starting the play clock. They might give you an extra five or ten seconds before they start the actual 25 seconds. Sure, clock. sure, yeah. The, unload the pile slowly. So th this very well may be the last play if the officials, you know, take their time with it. See how slow it gets to. Yeah. So they. Uh, yeah, th I think that they might have to kneel. They should only have to kneel one more time. It's kind of like AU basketball too. Sometimes the refs are pretty good at ball. Like, all right, like we're getting to the end. Yeah, I mean, in this situation, we don't, you know, we don't need to. Well, like you said, it took a while for them to un unpile everybody here yeah. and and whatnot. And uh, I'm, just, I'm gonna I'm guess. I'm just basing on the body language of everyone here. It looks like the refs are okay with just letting us run out. Nope. nope. Man, okay, as, as, I take it back. As we say that, they're gonna have them kneel it one more time and. Oh, that will be Mr. that. Mr. Angelo, I'm sure, was in the quarterbacks here for the play clock there to let him know. Um, in that event here, yeah, we're going to go through the handshake lines. Uh, as we see, uh, Coach and staff from North talking to some of these players right away. Coach Herb Devine, uh, for Situate head coach, he's coming across right away. Uh, come see Ryan Craig, so I'm sure these guys will have a, a few good words. Uh, All right, so... Uh, great game, though. Yep, yeah, so uh, final score here at the stadium, Situate 42 and North Quincy 28. Real quick, run down some stats. Mikey Galligan, quarterback for North Quincy, 7 to 20 passing, 211 yards, and three touchdown passes. Ben Hudak had 13 rushes for 99 yards. 
Will Conley had three rushes for 46 yards, and Galligan had 26 yards rushing and a touchdown as well. Conley, we mentioned a little bit earlier on, had a big receiving day, four catches for 167 yards and two touchdowns. Hudak had two catches for 35 yards and a touchdown, and Nate Sampson had one catch uh, as well. For Situa, Jackson Belson, the quarterback, 12 of 23 passing for 140 yards and one touchdown. William Robinson, 17 rushes for 110 yards and three touchdowns. Alex Burrell had 95 yards rushing and one touchdown as well. Lawson Foley had six catches for 66 yards and a touchdown. Joseph Burke had two catches for 38 yards. Charlie Hartwell had two catches for 19. And Robinson and Rowan Glowick each had a catch as well for the Sailors. Looking at some of the highlights for North, too, as we talked about. So uh, Mikey Galligan tonight was able to set the new North Quincy standard for pa uh, passing touchdowns in a single season. So congratulations to him uh, for that. Hard work paying off. Um, you know, North's traditionally been a pretty heavy, you know, wing T team for, you know, 50, 60 years. So that's why that number isn't as, as high maybe as some other programs. But, you know, North's been airing it out this year, and he's a big part of uh, – He's the number one piece for why they are capable of doing that. And um, in addition, as well as I look over the stats as well, I'm pretty sure 99.9% .9 certain he's also the new career touchdown pass holder for North as well. So a big accomplishment for him, and he's only a junior. So North will be very fortunate to have him back next year. A very talented kid, um, and I know they'll be chomping at the bit, ready to go next week and try and take down Hanover. All right, so I just said next week, uh, uh, October 27th, North Quincy will be back here at the stadium for their final regular season game uh, and then trying to march into the playoffs after that tough task next, tough task next week excuse me, against Hanover. QA TV will be here next week for that game and will also be here tomorrow night, October 21st, when Quincy High School will host the Panthers of Plymouth South High School. Real quick, want to thank all of our crew that was here tonight. On camera, we had Ryan McWay and in the truck doing double duty tonight uh, on audio and graphics was Chris Potter and our director and our replay engineer uh, was Peter Doherty. So again, uh, Chris and Peter doing double duty uh, in the truck. Chris, our regular engineer uh so chris will get three times to pay and peter two times to pay here tonight for everything that they did so we want to thank them for everything excellent uh, glad to know the boss the can sign off on that <laughs> yes exactly exactly you approve <laughs> all right no, they, they, the, everyone does an awesome job as always every week and you know it's an amazing job that you guys are able to do but well, we all appreciate together. that martin we appreciate you helping us out and helping me out here in the booth it uh, certainly makes it a lot easier when there's two people up here instead, instead of one <laughs> and all of your knowledge that you have uh just football and also north quincy knowledge is certainly a uh, big help as well and we'll glad to have you back next week when uh, hanover comes to town so again final score here situate 42 and north quincy 28 for all the staff and crew of quincy access tv my name is jonathan clary thanks for tuning in to this edition of qa tv sports we'll see you next time <laughs>